This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Hey guys, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. 678 Tuesdays, we've been talking about professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg, at Sorgatron on Twitter, here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. And uh, we got a different kind of crew with you with us this weekend. First of all, replacing both Ronnie Starks and Mad Mike is Keel Bradley himself. Am I allowed to talk in this, Mike? Yes, yeah, talking. It's okay it's, to it's, talk it's, in yeah, this, Yeah, it's okay Mike? to talk okay. in this. It's okay. Hi, Mr. Sorg. I know you've been having a bad time with microphones in the last month. Um, that's going to be discussed. It's the reason why I'm being forced to wear a Chris LaRusso t-shirt today. Oh! Um, we're going to go later into my community service uh, to make up for that so that I'm, I'm allowed to back into IWC shows. Okay, that's good. Good to know. Good to know. Um, and also with us, he is here. He is the gavel, David Lawless. He has promised big announcements. Hello, everyone. Yes, big announcements today. We're going to be unveiling the matchups for the Four Chord Music Festival Wrestling Show that takes place October 6th at Highmark Stadium. Four Chord Music Festival 6, headlined by The Offspring. We'll get into that a little bit more later in the show, too. But thank you all for tuning in. And Mr. Sorg, Mr. Sorg, thank you so much for having me on the show. It's been what nine months since Jeez. i've been in the studio You're, you've come full term since uh <laughs> <laughs> being in the studio exactly here. and last time we had breakfast for you i'm so, now we just have water I'm yeah sorry. that's fine so there's beer in the fridge uh it was it was uh breakfast uh jack pollock actually mixed uh cookie crisp with beer yeah yeah with the bud light i think which was that disgusting. was interesting yeah I got some great gifts of just like Matt Connor just like popping cookie crisp in his mouth. Oh, that <laughs> gift of me eating and like raising my eyebrows. <laughs> it's a great holiday gift that, that goes around. So thank you for thank you for that. Years You're welcome. Of entertainment. You're yeah. welcome. You can see Breakfast with Champions over at Indie Wrestling Network. We'll of course mention that probably several times during this show. Yep. Uh, so thank you so much, and, and thank you for bringing some big announcements here. And there's a lot of a lot of you're involved in a lot of stuff going on in the area. Yeah. We're going to talk about as much as we can fit into a podcast. Great. But first of all, please everybody go check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com. That's where you can uh, subscribe to this show, find past episodes, and other things. If you want to see um, us talking at length about G1 Climax um with uh matt carlin's last night on the monday mayhem wrap-up you can go check that out over at wrestlingmayhemshow.com uh we can check out our 10-year anniversary talk with jimmy demarco and joe dombrowski on the to catch a predator promo that almost got pro wrestling ohio kicked off cable television <laughs> that's it's a hell of a story and the clip is of course over on joe dombrowski's youtube so you can watch it and the, this is this has been like uh, Pittsburgh uh, tri-state wrestling uh, folklore for 10 years and finally has been released. Um, <laughs> too hot for TV. Right. <laughs> uh, go check out all that stuff at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Please subscribe to this show wherever you like to listen or view. Even if you're like in our chat room right now on Facebook Live, please go pull up your iTunes, pull up your podcast app on your Android phone, wherever. Put a like, put a review. It helps us out tremendously to get in front of more people like you that like the mayhem and help grow the mayhem nation. You can also ask your Google Home, Amazon Echo, and that Apple thingy to play the Wrestling Mayhem Show podcast as well. Apple thingy. The Apple thingy. That. Those listening home, devices. The Home Pod. Yeah. I always want to say AirPod, so I've been kind of uh, slipping it. Uh, also, you can drop us an email at Good Times. Wow, good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Turning Beautiful him down voice. a little. Wow. <laughs> Beautiful voice. Woof. Uh, 412-206-WMS0. Tweet us at Mayhem Show. And, of course, check out the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page and group. A lot of great discussions happening there. And uh, we are here live every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Facebook Live and a lot of other platforms, including the Twitch, Indie Wrestling US, uh, including uh, Periscope, YouTube, but the main chat is happening on the Facebook, of course. If you're on another platform or catching us later, uh, please hashtag WMS678 uh, and at Mayhem Show. If you have any comments, if you 
I think we just completely got something wrong. Usually Mad Mike, but he's not here this week, so it's probably going to be Bradley. Uh, <laughs> or whatever the case may be. Anything else you want to add to the conversation, be sure to hit us up over there. Um, I know what the problem is. I'm just trying to replace Mad Mike. That's what that's. Oh, I got you. Oh, okay. I got you. It's his little shtick. Yeah. 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 This is like, a, you know, you know how to book wrestling, right? Uh, I've seen it on TV before. Good so enough. Yes. Good enough. <laughs> uh, and also catch us streaming on our friends at the 405 media.com. Check your local listing on their website for that. Thank you. Our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show, including our fan of the show. $1 level supporters. Bo diggity. Woo! As well as Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, Tina Keys, and Team Hammer Fist. And at the Pocky Club $5 level, Bradley. Woo! <laughs> you can't woo for yourself. Doc Remedy. Dave, I'm on the show. I can woo for anyone uh, I want he is, to. He's a point. boss. He's a Pocky Club boss. So Dave Podner, Kyle Turner, and Daniel Towery at the Beast Club $10 level. Actually, at $13 is Ryan Clark getting creative there. And at the manager $20 level, making Ronnie Starks cry last week, is our friends at OccupyProWrestling.com. Nice. Um, I, I, that's, that's the reason why I have to be here today is because I'm Ronnie Starks' manager and when your employee can't get your, their job done, the manager has to step in and cover for that employee. Okay. Uh, all right. To, and you know, you're getting all this. And I, my back, oh, my back. And, all right, fine. I, I got to do the employee's job now. Fine. Well, it's, it's, his back does hurt, actually. But <laughs> he had a pretty bad spill, actually, this Sunday at a uh, in a battle royal. So uh, I heard uh, about so, that. So uh, our, our, our thoughts uh, out to him. Hope he heals up. And uh, we see him in a ring or uh, ringside holding a tablet. Shout um, out to Ronnie, whatever. though. I mean, looks fantastic. He's mm-hmm. lost all that weight. Absolutely. I, inspirational. I Absolutely. can't wait for his debut on 205 Live. Right. It's coming. Yeah. He's down to 200 <laughs> now, I think. Jeez. Good he for lost, you, like, Ronnie. I think over 40 pounds, I think he said. Yeah. Incredible. Yep. Absolutely yeah. incredible. Him right. and uh, Max Alexander also out of QCW. Oh, yeah? Big weight loss, too. Looks good. Nice. Yeah. Nice. A lot, of, a lot of guys are turning around. Like I think, I, and obviously everybody's been inspired by John Roden's story. <laughs> mm-hmm, pretty much. I mean, I, I've gone the opposite direction, and I've I've gotten a little bigger, but uh, you know, it happens. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, they well, put, I gotta imagine that it gets difficult when you eat like a wrestler, and um, it gets difficult that you've got so much consumption, and if you're not doing enough it gets a little bit out of hand or it gets a little uh, out of control, I should say. Yeah. I mean, with me, it was just, I changed up my workouts and uh, I got bigger size wise. Mm -hmm. I I don't Mm -hmm. think I look any fatter than I did when I debuted. No, uh, no, it's just, it it happens. Some people's bodies go up, some people's bodies go down. I mean, you know, John Roden is, is definitely someone that has been an inspiration to a lot of people and absolutely his grind and his hustle. I mean, also you look at like, uh, Gannon, you look at Duke Davis. I mean, Duke Davis looks unbelievable, and it's just in incredible shape. It, it is it, not to get into the indie bit <laughs> so early. Usually, we save it for the second segment, but it, it is kind of impressive that you go to a wrestling show and see more people that look like wrestlers on TV. Sure, you do. do that. I mean, that's you know, and you know, body types aside, people are all over the place with stuff. But like, it, it is like. A, it's a different vibe and kind of gives a little more credibility. Well, but everything's television. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, even, you know, even pulling out your iPhone, you're shooting in HD and you're creating quality video content that looks like it could be on television. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the idea that every, you never know who's going to be watching and you know, the, the thing that you do could be the next internet sensation or internet buzz. I mean, look at our man, Johnny patch. Yeah. What happened this weekend? I think last I checked, it was over 40,000 views and Mm -hmm. will Osprey, will Osprey is, Tweeting about him, so you know you, you did something a few uh, a week ago that's been getting twenty thousand. Yeah, I was you know, yeah, with, so. with, with Jim Sterling. <laughs> so I mean, you just never know when the cameras are going to be on you. You want to look your best, and yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I I have been challenging myself to look a little bit better. Hopefully, by Four Chord Music Festival, I'll be down a little bit of weight and look even more like that's the wrestlers it. you see on TV. Now I just look like the lawyers you see on TV. Hey. Well, I, th- I think I can be the difference between what looks like a good show and a bad show. Mm. Is are the wrestlers look out there? Come out there? Do they look like wrestlers, or do they look, look like someone out of the crowd? That's oh yeah, trying to look like a wrestler. Yeah. I think gear goes a long way too, and I think mm. a lot gear, of people look, in Pittsburgh have, have, have upped their game in the gear. I do think though that I do like a differentiation in the size look on shows though. Like I, Wardlow looks fantastic, Duke looks fantastic, 
but mm-hmm. I don't want a show with 20 people that look just like right. Me. That, gets, that, gets, that gets boring. I want to. Yeah. I want to see someone that like a Beast Man. I want to mm-hmm. see someone like a Lee Moriarty. I want to see someone like a Wardlow, like a Duke Davis. I want to see someone like a Chris Larusso. Like I want to see those varying types of bodies and looks because then it creates, in my opinion, more compelling characters within Absolutely. the story. Well, speaking of a compelling character, there's one that re-debuted officially first in ring, un- well, well, not in front of camera, but in ring appearance of uh, Bray Wyatt or the Fiend back again. Man, this is I, I can't remember the last time I've seen WWE do something that I saw just like other wrestling Twitter, you know, other wrestlers on Twitter just light up about with the fiend character uh that that happened on sunday night like this was incredible and 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 i got to see a little bit you know of course we got to see the fiend uh uh you know do you know beat up uh uh current angle here in pittsburgh a week a week ago yeah and it just looked like the vibe was cool i'm like oh this is gonna look hokey in person but it looked amazing Mm-hmm. And though a little dark, I thought the SummerSlam thing just came off so freaking well. Like it, it, it had that. It was an evolution of Bray Wyatt and the Fireflies, and added a little bit more of a pinch of Undertaker to it. You know, and mankind, but, and, and mm-hmm. not a rip. It was mankind to, to what extent? Well, he's using the mandible claw. Okay, first true. Of all. Yeah, yeah. Second yeah. of all, he's wearing a mask. Yep. So I think it's a little bit of an homage to a lot of the darker characters that WWE wow. has had. And it's uh, incorporating them into like a modern modern day spin. It is. It is. When uh, when Kevin Owens did the stunner, I felt it was forced. It was like, oh, let's make him seem like Steve Austin. With uh, the Fiend and the Mandible Claw, it didn't look forced to me. It no. looked natural. No. It okay. looked like that's him. It's a good. It, and the Mandible Claw is such a good finishing <clears throat> move for a, for a terrifying character because yeah. mm. I mean, literally, you think about some of the most terrifying. And I'm not a big horror movie fan, right? But you think about some of the, the the terrifying ways that people are executed in these horror movies, or even look at Mortal Kombat, right? Mm-hmm, some of the, mm-hmm. the worst fatalities are people just grabbing down someone's throat and pulling their skull out and everything. Mandible Claw, <laughs> you're literally putting your hand down someone's jaw and forcing them to pass out. Or mm-hmm. or uh, we have a story, uh, speaking of that Indie Mayhem show from last week, Jimmy DeMarco tells a story about, you know, and before we saw uh, Bray Wyatt this weekend, uh, receiving a bandable claw with a condom on the hand, and, and the condom went down his throat and almost killed him. Oh, so it is a very deadly maneuver. <laughs> well, so yeah, that's, well, that's extremely deadly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> For many, many reasons. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, no, it, between that and, you know, hopefully this turns into, I mean, I, it has to be leading to a, a fiend versus demon. And maybe they'll build that over a couple months, or maybe it'll just be a Clash of the Champions. Yeah, Who knows? that maybe but, like uh, six yeah. months, maybe a Royal Rumble yeah. or something. It could be. I would love for Finn Balor to come back and start doing more of the uh, changing characters that mm-hmm. he did when he was on the indie scene. So mm-hmm. when he came out and did the Joker theme, when he did the Hannibal Lecter theme, when he did the well, um, even on NXT Venom there was a lot. Theme. In, in NXT, there was a lot more like variations on the on the demon character, right? Mm-hmm. There was a Jack the Ripper, probably not as varied as it was out there. Not as it wasn't no. as varied in the mm-hmm. sense that the, the 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 paint and the color scheme were still the same. Okay, yeah. right, and I get yeah. that from a branding standpoint, but you could ostensibly you could use Finn Balor as a vehicle to get some promotional materials out for superhero movies or horror oh, movies. Wow, right? Well, look at yeah. everybody else's get ups lately, right? Think about how much money. Look. How much money would WWE charge to do some type of co-promotion with the new Joker film that's coming out in October? Mm-hmm. If you got Finn Balor to come out in that paint as the Joker and you got to put at on the lower third, go see the Joker movie this time, <laughs> you yeah. got to show those clips. <laughs> Think about how much reach you'd have for I mean, that movie. I mean, they're, they're, it seems like integrated, like they've been doing, the, the ones they've been getting for integrated branding have been pretty tremendous. Like it's not just, hey, here's your, snickers crunch of the week and here's a here's a here's a throwback or something yeah like like the skitters the skittles commercial with new day that was running last night was hilarious yeah right it, it just it made so much sense uh for them and you're seeing more and more of that like alexa bliss in a in a uh, i just woke up the echo um uh in the uh, burger king commercial uh, that, that debuted like within the last month too it, it makes sense now why we kept on seeing they were still playing the sasha banks of uh, cable I'm, I'm, I'm sorry cellular phone yeah. commercials yeah mm-hmm. yeah because they've been doing that for weeks now and then it was mm-hmm. like i thought she was gone i thought they were going to do anything with right her. but now right. you see okay and then you had the um the kfc commercials too yeah uh-huh. you know they because and that worked with kfc's branding because they had all those people different people be in the colonel mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. i mean 
I could see how WWE could use a character like Finn Balor to do what he was doing before and do what he was known for mm-hmm. and use it to generate marketing and advertising, get more eyes on the product. It, this is a longstanding thing, isn't it? Because I'm I, I, thinking back to like the Kiss Demon in, in uh, WCW, the suicide character that basically started as a video game character for Impact Wrestling. Yeah. Like like this, I mean, and obviously none, none as, as big as like this Colonel KFC things or anything How about like that. Glacier? Glacier in general. Glacier may as well have been an advertisement for Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Absolutely, which ran after WCW on Monday nights. Yes. Was was their their Mortal Kombat mm-hmm. combat program? Yeah. So I, I just I just saw a comment on that Glacier match from from IWC early in the year, and, and somebody's like, because we we call him a legend on commentary and he everything, is. and yeah. I'm just like, well, they were like, oh, he's, he was just a marketing thing, da 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 da. I was like, no, like he's still a legend. He's still a part of history. He's right. still. Even as a thing that was a takeoff of this, he still led an impression, right? You I, know, and he's still a, an integral part of the business today. Absolutely, and he's still training people. And yep. I mean, I mean, I there was a I know there were glacier seminars, and and I I heard people took a lot from those things. To be honest with you, you know, legend has gotten thrown around a lot. But if you're anyone that's come in this industry before, you're a legend in some some way, shape, or form, mm-hmm. right? Okay. You've done something okay. that someone can grow from and learn from. And look. If you've done anything in professional wrestling, you deserve you know a modicum of respect because you've been on the other side of the aisle and yeah. you've done something that has potentially advanced the brand or advanced the industry. Um, you know, it's it's. I remember being moved to tears watching the Andre the Giant documentary because I never really appreciated all the sacrifices that that man made for the wrestling industry. Mm-hmm. And I know Hogan Andre at WrestleMania three is 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 an iconic match, but. To see what that man endured physically and what he went through and the ramifications of just that one match in that moment on professional wrestling. I mean, you think about it. I might not be here. You might not even have a whole business that you've built around professional wrestling and podcasting because that was what allowed wrestling to become mm-hmm. more popularized. Mm-hmm. God, that is around the time that where that is around the time where it started capturing my imagination. Sure. I, was, think, I, I think people once want to be careful with the, <laughs> using the word legend. You know, you say Glacier is a legend. <clears throat> he has his put, place in history. Yeah. And then Harley race dies. Yeah. He's a legend. Also. That's, you know, th- that's when you start saying, you know, you throw a le- that's a legend. That's like an up here legend. Sure. But I mean, you could I- I'll make the same analogy here in in uh, in the law. Mm-hmm. Right. Edgar Snyder is a legend in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Why? Because he was one of the first attorneys to begin marketing mm-hmm. for attorneys and create mm-hmm. campaigns for personal injury attorneys. I can't tell you the last time that man stepped foot in a courtroom. <laughs> I couldn't tell you what his ability is as a trial lawyer either. Mm-hmm. But he is a legend because of what he did for the legal industry. Mm-hmm. It's the same mm-hmm. thing in wrestling, right? So, okay. I mean, it, it, and if there's something like you look at, you know, I kind of throw around and, and I always get kind of a, a groan whenever it happens, whenever Shirley Doe's in here or Paul Atlas, you know, I was like, they are a, and this happens at the shows too, like, they, you know, they're referred to as Pittsburgh wrestling legends. That you're a part of that scene and that ecosystem here, have trained I don't know how many people that you see on your TV every week, you know, that, I mean that, you know, Shirley Doe is not just like, you know, the, the, you know, wrestling ECW guys in the mid two thousands to, no. to, to people, even though that may be your moment, but it's like he had a hand in getting Elias, you know, ready for wrestling. Uh, I think, I think DJ Z, yeah, uh, walking we, wild, uh, part of that as well. Right. Yeah. So, so, I mean, that's, that's, you know, it's an all around thing. It's not just in front of the curtain, what you've seen in the ring, what you see in the ring now, you know, um, you know, we always kind of laugh when we talk about the hall of fame, like, well, Coco's in there. So I guess so-and-so can be on there. Right. Coco's still like, it's not just like a champion and the main event. It was still part of, file driver man <laughs> you know it was part of that and wrestling is marketing and if you're a part of that marketing machine and and did something for that and created memories then i think you count in that absolutely so, as absolutely. far as that okay so it doesn't matter how small your impact is or, mm-hmm. or the role you played I mean, if you move it forward that's not fine. to put glacier on the same plane as a harley race right i don't i i, I think legend is a wide breadth it right. is. Mm-hmm. So it is. It's very temporal too, mm-hmm. right? So I mean, you know, if 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 the modern fan goes back and watches a Harley Race match, they may not have the same appreciation for it that someone watching it at the time has, mm-hmm. right? But I think 
you know, 20 years from now, when you look at people like Ricochet and Will Ospreay and all these high flyers that have, you know, changed the landscape of professional wrestling today, who knows what professional wrestling is going to look like and how someone's going to view that. But for the time, those people, they're legends. Mm -hmm. They're legends and they will be looked at as legends. And, and they uh, influence the people that, you know, when you start getting into the mid 80s and on, there's a lot of people that are influenced by people like Harley Race. Sure. Sure. And you can still use uh, what you learn from individuals like Harley Race and what they've done today, you know, mm -hmm. but it's just blending today's style with. Well, there's, there's wrestlers in this area that uh, were trained by Harley Race. Uh, Ethan or Wright. Yeah, I believe was trained by Ethan, Harley Race. Ethan Wright actually, uh, <clears throat> so he drove Harley Race up to AIW when mm -hmm. AIW had their Hail to the King event. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I got to meet Harley Race too, which mm -hmm. was cool. And I think uh, Harley Race seminar, not that one, but one last year, uh, was one of the things that motivated uh, Rodin. He tells a good story about that when he was with us. I think both on Indie Mayhem and when is a guest spot on our uh, network partner, Fishing Without Bait as well. Yeah, he did the, I think mm -hmm. he did the Harley Race camp. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a big turnaround. Um, something else making an impression that's got me kind of fascinated lately. AEW, you know, we've been getting our AEW is elite people. First of all, first announcement that I know Riz is very excited about. Uh, there was a promo that went around of Orange Cassidy is now joined officially AEW. Sure. Oh my. Fantastic. Yeah. If you haven't seen Orange Cassidy, Please do. He's fantastic, and he's the most laid-back wrestler you ever see. It's great. Uh, also, um, there's these promos running. I love these. I'll describe this for you guys on audio here. But um, it's it's Jake the Snake Roberts is at a dealer table, which first that visual to begin with, it's just fantastic. Well, that is yeah. Jake. That is Jake the Snake is Jake Roberts. The Snake I've, Roberts. Seen, I've seen the promos, but I looked at it and I, I was like, almost it didn't click until you just said it. it was yeah. Like, that looks. Who is? I'm that? just like, is that Jake? That's freaking Jake. No, I didn't Jake. even see that. Far. Well, the first one I saw was, you know, uh, and I heard about this. This is Roddy Piper's daughter, Teal Piper. Yeah. And there's some really good, really good homages to uh, Roddy in this promo. And then something random is going to play from Mr. Rogers. Uh, so, uh, when I love the presentation AEW is doing, like everything from like nice produced things like this to like we're going to do a YouTube show with a cell phone, and, and just everything across the board like is building things up without television. Yeah, you know that we've seen these events that they've done very very well for them over the last um, several months, I guess at this point. Uh, but the other one I want to point out another return, and and she's been I we just saw we just saw this individual. A couple years ago at King of Trios, uh, when we when we head out there, Jazz is coming back. Yeah, to television. Oh, wow. Yep. And wait, to, so she's and she's got a hell of a, a look. It is like it looks like a more modern uh, Vader mask. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, she's got a shaved head look to her and everything. It's incredible. So I'm kind of curious to see what uh, they're going to be doing with her as well. Uh, so D didn't Jazz face Jocelyn earlier this year? Did she over yeah. at Mega? I think so. Mm. Yeah. So not too far from here. Well, and I love how you know everything's consistent with what they're doing for these shows, right? Mm -hmm. So you have the gambling theme, you've got the Las right. Vegas theme, right? Right. You've got the you know bringing it to the table betting theme. I mean, what AEW's doing and how they're building this this brand. I mean, they're doing it right. You know, they. They didn't just say, "Hey, we got a TNT contract and try to put a show together next week." They're mm -hmm. they have a long term goal and they have a plan. And I, I you know, mm -hmm. I trust the powers that be in charge there because they seem to know what they're doing. I mean, Cody Rhodes reinvented himself from nothing. Yeah, he's trying to reinvent wrestling. It's fantastic. Um, so Great. really excited to see what's happening there. I mean, I just I just can't wait. It, it just as if I'm having, you know, not having trouble watching enough wrestling these days. Uh, <laughs> now we're going to have this thing weekly plus pay per views. Uh, so we'll see. Um, we'll see uh, how burnout I get in the fall. Apparently. Oh, we're uh, all going to be. Burned <laughs> we're, we're all going to be like. But but to be honest with you, it's as, but so great though, right? Uh, as a performer and as a wrestler, it, it's there's no better time yeah. to be in wrestling because, you know, there's so many opportunities that are going to be coming down the pike for a lot of us here in Pittsburgh too. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, as I if there aren't already plenty, <laughs> well, no, but I mean, once you see how AEW takes away some of the, the big indie talent that works in the East coast mm -hmm. and, you know, in the Midwest, 
they're going to have to fill those spots. Absolutely. Right? They're going to have to fill those spots. Uh, that's mm-hmm. what they, that they often say. Somebody asked me, what am I going to do for my big tournament around, uh, out, out when AEW takes everybody? I was like, well, find out what happens WrestleMania weekend, and you know who you're going to book in the summer. Sure. Like, that's it. Sure. Right? I mean, somebody's going to step up. Like you said, people are going to fill the gaps. Yeah. Or, you know. If, you know if you want to see who the next indie stars are going to be, go to WrestleMania weekend and mm-hmm. go around to the indie shows mm-hmm. because, you know, the, the, the feeding ground has been almost like PWG, anyone who's in BOLA, they you know, evolve, either evolve, right? Those guys are, are going to AEW or WWE, mm-hmm. but you start going around to those smaller indie promotions, like the collective and everything. And I don't even want to say small. But like AIW and, you know, what, what Blackcraft had up in PWG. New York this year. Well, PWG is, I, I would put them at more the higher upper echelon of the indies. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Okay, okay. But I'm talking about like your mid to, to larger ones on the cusp, like an AIW. Mm-hmm. IWC. Right. IWC. You know, these are the ones where it's the next level of up and coming talent. You know, and then like. Mm-hmm. You know, we're going to be down in Tampa this year, mm-hmm. right? So we get a couple bookings down in Tampa. Just keep keep it growing, mm-hmm. right? Make your connections. Mm-hmm. That's that's what's going to happen for the people here in Pittsburgh. Absolutely. Or yeah. you wrestle someone who's a member of the Bullet Club at Stomp Out Cancer, <laughs> like Lee Moriarty. <laughs> oh, look, yeah. That's Stomp that. Out yeah, Cancer yeah. Friday night. Hey, I have to go see that then. You do. Oh, I'll, I'll go back. You do. There's a couple surprises <laughs> in tow for the Gavel David Lawless. The Moron Invitational. Again. So we'll see who steps up to the plate. That's going to be amazing. Yeah. I want to talk about that for first. Well, I want to give a shout out. Hey, a lot of that wrestling goes down over at IndieWrestling.us and IndieWrestling.network. Uh, of course, the gavel David Lawless you can see on Breakfast of Champions. That's right. Breakfast with Champions. Quite possibly one of the most enjoyable segments that I've had an opportunity to do here in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> you, really, you really guided the conversation uh, uh, with that. That was pretty cool. It was fun. Yeah. It was fun. I would welcome the opportunity to do it again, but I would encourage more wrestlers to come on and do some food related show so so this is so we've had waffles with women wrestlers that we just posted the third and final episode i believe there may be some uh bonus content we'll be releasing in the coming weeks from that as well yeah um but uh so so people have come to me yeah and said what about this with this so like what, at, there's at least three suge- three <clears throat> legitimate suggestions that have come my way from wrestlers how about this one because you could you've this lovely iga grocery store across the street and quite possibly the best street tacos in all of pittsburgh mm-hmm. tostadas with tag teams it's gonna get crowded in here or, or tortillas <laughs> with tag teams tortillas with tag teams yeah. we have wrestles with rigatoni is one we're working on yeah um there was another one that was just recommended to me too it was like, uh, is it is it was a pasta with promoters or something like that? Well, um, look, if I don't want to book this show out for you, but if you're going to have any type of <laughs> pasta show, Mambo Italiano and Chess Flexer have to be one and two on the list. But wait, wait, so then we have to get somebody to separate them since they've had their epic pa- pasta death match battles up in Prospect Pro Wrestling. Yeah, which yeah. you can see on the Indie Wrestling Network exclusively, by the way. And which eventually, if WWE continues to, th- to hurt for ratings, you might see on a WWE. That is show. true. <laughs> that is true. Well, we were joking backstage at, at 2PW when they did the the bag out on a pole match, right? <laughs> that was amazing. And we were joking. We said, you know, as funny as this is, maybe some big promotion does it at some point because they mm-hmm. just run out of stuff to do, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know? Or Vince Russo gets hired again. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> God damn, this bag it on a pole match. It's great. It's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but such innovative matches like the bag it on the pole match. So much more. Uh, our friends at Rise with a Y. Uh, <laughs> our friends at uh, uh, Prospect Pro Wrestling, Uprise, uh, Black Diamond Wrestling, uh, all over at the Indie Wrestling dot network uh we just uh posted uh, uh one of my favorite projects I've, I've worked on finding zach gowan the documentary uh from a few years ago talking about his journey uh growing up to wwe to being fired to uh recovery from drugs and alcohol and uh where he's at now and he's doing such great great things good um for him. good for him by the way a tweet that he put out the other day one of those you know inspired by bray wyatt's the uh hey i just booked in my head uh about three months of television of Zach Gowan and the Fiend, starting with him uh, uh, coming into one of his speaking sessions at a high school. <laughs> so, and then eating his leg off. And, yeah, he needs leg off. Yeah, of course, right? <laughs> naturally. So, naturally. Uh, so a lot of fun stuff there. A lot of discovery. Over 150 hours for $5.99 a month. Seven-day free trial. Uh, like, like one fellow who just messaged me that he just binged a ton of Rise Wrestling. 
because he's been intrigued by uh, these old and new clips we've been posting of Shirley Doe. Yeah. It's like, wow. Lots of Gavel David Lawless content. Lots on of Gavel David Lawless. Too. That's so right. So if anyone's out there that doesn't know who the Gavel is and wants to see what the Gavel's all about, check out Indie Wrestling Network. Yeah, we got at least two years of Gavel in there, right? It's a Something lot. like that. So you will you will have caught quite possibly the the my favorite promo, my best promo, and my favorite storyline feud that I've had thus far in my career with Brandon K. Oh, geez. nice. Yeah, yeah, it's in there. I remember that promo because you came out. Is that the wig? Not the wig. This was this <laughs> no, was no, this no. was the fake retirement speech. The fake oh, retirement. Yeah. You, you came out. You had everything but the salmon coat. And ju- I'm expecting. I'll oh, just boo and boo. I hate it. And you're shaking everyone's hand and being so nice. And I said, I was like, I'm not being fooled by this. No. And I wouldn't shake his hand. And he yep. went up there and he did his promo. And I was convinced. And I was like. I feel like crap. <laughs> he's uh, he's up there retiring, <laughs> and I because I was there when you got that headshot that, that uh, and bleeding so badly, and I was like, oh yeah. my god, that did it. Oh, and I didn't shake his hand. I'm such a jerk. And he turned on Brandon. I was like, oh, you son of a mother. Let's go. Look at you. Oh my god. Yeah, I've had rise. Rise. I want to say has has given me a lot of creative freedom to do stuff. And mm-hmm. actually, I'm still waiting. I haven't seen the clips yet, but we need to get them out at some point. The uh, Tang Su Lawless clips. I don't know if we had a chance to cut that up yet. Oh, when no. I did the instructional video on self defense, oh, which just turned out to be me kicking people in the balls the whole time. <laughs> that was. <laughs> how did I not clip that? I feel like I had to have clipped that out because that's. I, that, I haven't seen any. You haven't yet. seen that. We'll have no. to see if that's on the YouTube channel. Yeah. But I need to get that out very, very soon. That, that's got some gifable moments in it. Too. <laughs> <laughs> and plus, like, I feel like at some point, right, depending on how long I'm, you know, wrestling in the area. Like all these clips that we have with these trainees, right? Remember the CM Punk promo that they did before the John Cena match where they had him riding dressed as the gangster when he was doing the extra work with WWE, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. These are all setting up future matches between, you know, the, the trainees now and the people <laughs> that are on the main show. Like that time like, you hit me in the balls and thought right, I was going like to learn karate. Chuck. Right, like Chuck, who I who was the first person that had pulled the gun on me, right? That <laughs> yeah. I kicked in the balls. Or yeah, Alex, yeah. who I, you know, kicked in the balls. You know, like one day they're gonna be like, "Oh, it's time for you to get your comeuppance," you know. Like mm-hmm. I remember the time where, oh, who was when John McChesney was turning heel at IWC and slapped the shit out of the person who I think would become Chess Flexor, running sound. Awesome. Like that, like that kind of thing coming around. Awesome, right? Yeah. One no, that's and that's what's so cool about it. Um, it it all comes full circle. Absolutely, and you can uh, uh, see who's next and a lot of the past too. We got a lot of Prime Wrestling PWO. Uh, on there as well over at uh, IndieWrestling.network. And also, uh, new Fight Society from this last Friday is on IndieWrestling.us, including uh, the the uh, now Grand Slam Pittsburgh champion, Shirley Doe, uh, defeating uh, uh, Beast Man, as well as the uh, memorial show from this Sunday in the works in pre-order right now. Uh, and plus, this weekend's Rise and Stomp Out of Cancer will be also on the, on, on the, those platforms. Busy weekend so, for wrestling oh here boy. In Busy weekend every weekend in wrestling, it seems, these days. That's true. So, I mean, geez, there was three I was around. <laughs> then plus SummerSlam and TakeOver. Uh, speaking of which, hey, uh, I, I want to touch on a couple other things coming up here. But uh, uh, first, you had a pretty big announcement today. Yes. How about that timing? Perfect. Like it was planned or something. So I'm going to start with a little bit of a backstory. Uh, six years ago, my best friend in the whole wide world, Rishi Ball, who is the lead singer for a band, Eternal Boy, here in Pittsburgh, uh, very popular pop punk band, came to me and said that he wanted to start doing a music festival called Four Chord Music Festival, inspired by Warp Tour and other music festivals. He really wanted to offer an opportunity for pit- people in the Pittsburgh music community to come out, have a fun day, and see a lot of cool bands. Okay, so six years ago at Club Zoo, Extaza, call it what you will, in the Strip District, did the first Four Chord Music Festival. And I actually... I, I do all the legal work for Rishi. And I mean, I remember sitting up at two in the morning reviewing contracts at my kitchen table. And, you know, it was it was great. I wouldn't trade those experiences for the world. Have done the festival the last five years at Extaza. Gotten some better name bands before, but it still pretty much had the same draw and same attendance because mm-hmm. it's a limited space. This year, Four Chord Music Festival is going to be at Highmark Stadium in downtown Pittsburgh. Huge capacity outside where the Riverhounds play, 
Two stages headlined by The Offspring, who hasn't played in Pittsburgh in two years. Anne Berlin's doing a reunion show, Eternal Boys performing. You've got Knuckle Puck. You've got Real Friends. You've got Seaway. You've got Grayscale. So all these popular bands today and Simple Plan's going to be playing right before Offspring, too. Nice. So we're hitting mm. the 90s. We're hitting the early 2000s. And we're <clears> hitting today. Today, we just announced the first hour of Four Chord Music Festival starting at 1 p.m. We're going to do a wrestling show. And I am extremely proud of this for, for a couple of reasons. First of all, Rishi was one of the inspirations for me to become a professional wrestler. Um, he's been in a band since we were in high school, has always been the type of person to go out and follow his dreams. Uh, when I was debating, you know, following my dream and, and getting into wrestling, he was the one that encouraged me or one of the people that encouraged me to do it. And um, when he started Four Chord Music Festival, it was to get, you know, to, to get Pittsburgh to come together to do a DIY festival to promote music here. And now that he's giving me the opportunity to give back to the community in my own way as well with professional wrestling, I couldn't be any happier. And um, today we just announced the show. Um, it's going to be an hour long. It's going to start at one. And today on the Wrestling Mayhem show, we're going to announce the card. And I'd yes. like to get the live reaction of Sorg and Bradley because I think you're going to be very taken aback by the matches that we have. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to start with the first match we're going to announce. It's going to be the main event taking on the production, which oh, is going to be nice. Derek, Derek Direction and Dan Housen. And which I don't think Dan Housen has been in the Pittsburgh area. Correct, which is exactly the reason why we wanted to bring him in. That's Sam and Erie. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I think Eddie Only is going to be coming in as well with the production. Okay. But, um, you know, I, I love his look. I love, you know, what him and Derek have done. And, you know, they're, they're tremendous guys. Uh, main event obviously goes without saying. They're one of the mm -hmm. hottest tag teams in all professional wrestling. And best dressed on the Wrestling Mayhem show, uh, at least one year running. Excuse me. It is a competition. Excuse is, me. I mean, I would just see a vote. This is a fan vote. No, fan but, votes. but um, and you know, you're one of. Ma top main five. event would not have worn those socks. The socks are great. They match the uh, the shoes. <laughs> they do. They do. And and also, I believe the cover. Main came event the would have worn those shoes. But go ahead. So all right. So <laughs> main event goes without saying. You know how popular they are, and yeah. you know just couldn't couldn't think of having a show in Pittsburgh without them. So we wanted to pull some people from the Ohio area. Next mm -hmm. match, which I'm extremely excited about. I think I'm more excited for the promos than I am for the actual match itself. But it's going to be good. <laughs> Is going to be the Silver Tooth Satan Atticus Coger mm -hmm. oh. versus Matt Cross. Wow, oh, that's that's oh, going to be my. something. That's going to be a good match. Uh, we are going to have a no disqualification four chord four way, which is going to feature the gavel David Lawless, Lee Moriarty, M V Young coming in from New York. Oh mm -hmm. boy, and Kevin Blackwood coming in from Buffalo. Wow. Oh my. One of the uh, famed Buffalo boys. Yes. That have been in the news of in the last few months. Yes. If you've been seeing some of MV Young's matches lately <sighs> against Effie and people like that, yeah, uh, he, had a he had a banger with Bro Hemoth when he came in for Uprise. He did. Yeah. Uh, he's brutal. Yeah. Very, mm -hmm. very brutal. So that's going to be a fun match. And then the match that I'm very excited for, which, drum roll please, Pittsburgh. For the first time ever. With 40 years of wrestling experience between them, you are going to see Brandon K versus John McChesney. Oh, my. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. That was the reaction that I was hoping for. for oh, whoa. Oh whoa. Never happened. They've been, yeah. Let's see, Brandon K has been wrestling since the 90s, McChesney since the early 2000s in the area. And they have, to my knowledge, never touched. Never once touched oh. or been in a wrestling ring together in Pittsburgh. Yeah. So you're going to get a chance to see at Four Chord Music Festival a matchup that's never been done before in Pittsburgh with two legends Jeez. of Pittsburgh. Uh, that is amazing. That yeah. That is absolutely that, amazing. And so this, this is a fantastic showcase of what Pittsburgh wrestling can be. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, Four Chord Music Festival in general is about showcasing local talent, bringing national talent in. It's about coming out and having fun. And mm -hmm. I encourage everyone that's a fan of wrestling or a fan of the music to come out, bring your friends. It's an amazing day. We've got, you know, you put up the show flyer before. We've got something like 14 or 15 bands that are going to be performing that day. It's all fun music. We're going to have a lot of cool activities and events there. And one thing we're also going to announce, too, coming up with the wrestling 
which uh, we're going to keep that a little bit of a secret. But for all you music fans out there, we're actually going to have a band match. So we're going to have a tag team match that's going to have two wrestlers and two members of bands that are performing at Four Chord that day as well. So, what? yeah. Yeah, it's going to be really cool. Um, you want to make sure you come out early. There's actually VIP tickets as well. Mm -hmm. VIP mm -hmm. gets you uh, all access all day. Mm -hmm. You'll actually have uh, bathrooms that you can use inside of the uh, Highmark Stadium. There will be a catered uh, brunch there as well, and there's a special acoustic performance. For VIP, doors are opening at 11. For general admission, doors open at noon. Mm -hmm. Wrestling's going to start around 1, and mm -hmm. then all the bands start at 2. The wrestlers, most of the wrestlers are going to be hanging out throughout the day. And actually, to be honest with you, as the person that was going out and getting the talent, it's a pretty easy sell for the wrestlers because a lot of them like this music. <laughs> There's so many similarities between being in an independent band yeah. and being an indie wrestler. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, it, it's funny because I was just up at a uh, pop punk show in Buffalo, and I was talking to one of the guys that's coming in who you know may or may not be involved in the, uh, in the band match. And we were talking about how similar wrestling is to um, music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so to bring the two together and to have the opportunity to do this uh, with my best friend at a festival that I've helped with for the last five years, um, you know, where you know, my best friends performed on that festival every year mm -hmm. in addition to organizing it, which is super stressful for him, but I'm happy to help. So, you know, come out, you're going to get a chance to see everything, a tag match, a, a really cool, what I would say, special attraction match with Matt Cross and Atticus. I mean, I, you know, I think I think the world of Atticus as a performer, as a character, as a human being. Um, and I was, you know, very happy that we were able to get Matt Cross to come in. You know, it goes without saying how yeah. talented he is. Yeah. And he actually hasn't been in Pittsburgh uh, since the House of Hardcore show. Wow. At Elizabeth. So that's another yeah. that's another two years. Ago, yeah. Well, I'm sorry. No, 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 I take that back. He performed at um, the Black Craft show at the Priory last August. So it's been over a right, year since right. Matt Cross, but Matt Cross singles hasn't been in Pittsburgh for, gosh, two years plus. Um, again, John McChesney and Brandon Kay, first time ever, could be the start of a feud. Who knows? We don't get to see Matt Cross a lot in Pittsburgh. No, we don't. No, no um, we don't. I, the only other time I can think I've seen Matt Cross was uh, of all people facing RJ City. Yeah, four year, four or five years ago. And what's cool about this is I think that there's a lot of crossover between the people that are fans of the bands we have and people that are fans of wrestling. So this is just an added level of entertainment that you'll have for your day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've we've purposely selected people that are within the tri-state area as well so they can pull some of their fans in. Yeah. Buffalo's a three-hour drive. Erie's two hours. Yeah. Cleveland yeah. with the AIW people, that's two hours away. And I yeah. know those AIW people love the bands that are mm -hmm. that are playing on the show because I've seen the the photos of those bands backstage at the AIW shows. <laughs> so I would encourage everyone to check out Four Chord Music Festival, their Facebook page. Uh, check out any of the wrestlers' Facebook page. There's links for the tickets uh, to buy there. Um, it is 100% DIY festival. We get sponsors, but it's, it's, it's completely organized by Rishi Ball of Eternal Boy, I do help with the legal work, um, mm -hmm. and you know we, we, we put it out there. So please awesome. come out to the festival, support, and we want to continue to make it grow. That's awesome. This sounds like this sounds amazing. Got to get down to it. I, I got to mark on my calendar. I want to make sure I get down to that too because I, I got to see some of these matches, especially Brandon and John. Mm -hmm. Brandon and John's going to be a special treat. Um, you know, uh, I think ever since the brawl under the bridge with KSWA, I've been on a, you know, war path to just destroy my body. So, <laughs> uh, you know, things are going to get pretty crazy in the four way as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's nice, you know, Kevin Blackwood hasn't been in Pittsburgh in a year mm -hmm. and he was here for, um, the Blackcraft show, mm -hmm. but that's a guy, I mean, again, love him as a person, super nice guy, great to work with. Uh, and he's someone else that has a unique look. I think he's one of the next top stars in professional wrestling. Lee, MV, same thing, doing great things in New York. I mean, you know, it's just, it's cool. And and I'm just really looking forward to, to to getting a chance to perform, but also getting a chance to have a treat for the Pittsburgh wrestling community for people that they don't see a lot of. Absolutely. That's awesome. That's awesome. Bradley, are you recovering from that announcement? It, it sounds amazing. Um, there's some, like, I wouldn't even have thought of uh, McChesney versus uh Brandon K. 
that to think that we could get to see that is amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, I've wanted to, to, uh, Dan House to come down to Pittsburgh and creep us all out for <laughs> at least a year. <laughs> oh, he definitely creeped me out in Erie. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. That was good. So, no, that sounds like a very well put, to, put together card. It's like I read the minds of the collective Pittsburgh wrestling community and said, mm-hmm. what would they want to see? <laughs> so Absolutely. Well, that's not that's not the only big thing you've been involved with lately. Yeah. Huh. Um, <laughs> Seems like a few of them lately, yeah. right? Uh, I did. I did dig up the clip a little bit. You had you had an encounter with uh, apparently a YouTube superstar. Oh yeah, uh, Mr. Sterling. Just, just la- last Star weekend, Starman. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so so for those that don't know, because I honestly I didn't know Jim Sterling going into this year, and it was there. He was there and everything. But you got to be involved with this at Rise Wrestling last Saturday. Yeah. Um. What? <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's we'll take it from the top. Yes. So first of all, one thing that I'm really proud of that has really come into form since the beginning of this year mm-hmm. is uh, the gavel David Lawless, who admittedly spreads himself way too thin in his life, both professionally and personally, uh, is involved in a lot of promotions here in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. But I feel like now I think you're in competition with the Rev in number of promotions. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Uh, I feel like now, though, I really have started to gain an identity at each promotion. Mm -hmm. And at Rise, I, you know, happen to be teaming with Dr. Daniel C. Rockingham. Mm -hmm. Good friend. Shout out to Daniel. Um, And we're doing our hashtag privilege tag team, which has been a blast. Uh, So Brandon um, and Christy are, you know, big on their YouTube channel and their podcast, and they follow other video game podcasters or culture podcasters as well. They reached out to Jim Sterling, who I had no idea about either, but Mm -hmm. is big in the video game community. Has over 200,000 followers on YouTube, has quite a massive following on Twitter also. Mm -hmm. So he has this character, Starman, uh, I believe I'm I'm saying it correctly, uh, and Brandon messaged him and he came in. So when... Marcus had texted me about what was going on. He said, we're going to put you with Sterling and it's going to be you and Dan and we've got a really good segment. And we had this just amazing segment with, with Jim and, and what, what's happening with the gavel and Dan Rockingham is I'm going through a little bit of a reformation. So I'm no longer insulting people, but the beautiful part is I'm still insulting people, right? Because I'll say before I met Dan Rockingham, I would have said, Brad, you're a, an ugly criminal who's a moron and should go back to school. But now I don't say that anymore because I'm reformed. You, right? you, you just said it. No, I didn't. I would have said that before, but I don't say that now. So, you, you just, um, right. so we had this. So we we had this segment, and Jim Sterling came out. He brought out military intelligence. We had a match, and then after the match, Jim uh, slapped us in the face with his gloves and gave uh, Dan and I a uh, simultaneous paper cut with our privilege uh, pamphlets, as we call them. Uh, the clip went up on Twitter on Sunday and had 200,000 or has 20,000 views. I, I, wow. It's amazing. It's amazing. And actually, um, Xander Gabriel from IWC came up to me at the show on Saturday and said, dude, you got to work with Jim Sterling. That's awesome. (laughs) And I was like, yeah, like, first of all, I love Jim. Jim mm-hmm. was fantastic. Super nice guy. I can't wait to work with him again. I can't wait till he's back at Rise again. He was just fantastic. Um, His character seemed like a very easily translatable to pro wrestling. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and all the stuff that he does with video games and with his, you know, his social, it is easily translatable to professional wrestling. Because everything's professional wrestling at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. He, but, was, he was stating that... Um, he didn't like the cheating that was going on because it was unauthorized cheating, was what he was saying. Well, I think it was more like it was it was not it was it wasn't unauthorized. It was uh, lacked uh, lacked panache or something like that. Yeah, the, he was. Yeah. I'm, I'm missing. Am I saying that right? He, he um, Jim Sterling was didn't like the cheating that was happening at Rise because he said it was unauthorized cheating. It was unapproved cheating. Unapp- and I, I, I went to him during intermission. I was saying, what do you mean that it's a, like unauthorized, inapproved? He says, it's, it's sort of like cheating with benefits was how he explained it. Huh. That makes sense. Okay. All right. And, and Jim, to his credit, did a great job with the segment, hit his, hit his spots on time, and um, 
yeah, it got 20,000 views on, on Twitter. Mm-hmm. I didn't have my notifications turned on, so I got a text from Marcus that said, has your social media stopped blowing up? And I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. And then I go on Twitter <laughs> and I see this. A lot of great comments, too. A lot of people that were extremely receptive to the clip, to what Dan and I did. Um, I think my favorite comment was, those two guys could sell us bus tickets at a bus stop from the from the paper cut, which, <laughs> you know, as someone that, you know, has, has gotten into this late in life, but but truly has a passion for it, it's always nice to hear that, fans are taking to the things you're doing. So mm-hmm. uh, awesome opportunity. And one thing that I'm sure that Brad can talk about a little bit is that a lot of new faces at Rise at that show. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of people that came up to us at intermission, when we were selling merchandise and said, I'd never been to a wrestling show before, but I definitely want to come back. And they came there because of Jim Sterling. That's awesome. And all it takes is that we'll talk a little further about, about me a little bit later. But all it takes is what? Oh, we just get we have the had the Bradley segment. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> um, all it takes is that one thing that gets someone to that show, right? Mm-hmm. And whatever it is, you know, and that's that's the thing about professional wrestling, and that's the thing that I love about professional wrestling, is that you can go to a show and you can identify and find something that you love. If you like darkness, right. you can find it. If you like comedy. You can find it. If you like athleticism, you can find it. If you like bigger people, you can find it. If you like women wrestling, you can find it. If you like lawyers getting their butts kicked, you can find it. Exactly. Who doesn't like to see that? But but that's the thing is, you know, if you put a wrestling show together and it doesn't have those blends mm-hmm. of comedy, seriousness, athleticism, I mean, you're not capturing the, the entire audience that you could. Mm-hmm. But when you really take the time to put those shows together, and I think personally that was one of the best Rise shows that they had done from start to finish. Yes. And, you know, going in, it's funny because you drive to these shows and you think about these matches that are being put together and you think, how is this going to translate in the show? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So they have this big build to this Rise vs. Grindhouse five-on-five match, which was the centerpiece of the show itself. And, man, do I have to tell you, that sitting in the back as a fan watching that match, it delivered. So I can only imagine the impression that it left on the people that were sitting in the audience that may not have been at a wrestling show before to think about how incredible it was. And it was very I, smart to have uh, Sterling come in for that show, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. You know, and I, I, I hope R- Rice has a lot of good shows. Yeah, and I hope we to, kept we kept up with all that on video. No, I, it was crazy. It was mm-hmm. crazy. I think you know it, it's funny because you look at how the promotions have kind of built themselves up, mm-hmm. right? And each promotion has taken a little bit of a different approach to yeah. to how they market themselves and how they've built themselves up. Rise, in my opinion, you know, we take a lot. We take a lot of pride in everything we do as professional wrestlers. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, for those of us that were trained by Brandon and that have been at Rise before the screen was there, before <laughs> it was even, you know, technically Rise Wrestling. I mean, it is it is an enormous sense of pride for us every time we go to those shows and every time we deliver, because we that promotion has been built with local talent and mm-hmm. nothing but local talent. I mean, we've brought in the occasional person here or there, but it's really been local talent that has really carried the torch. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I can't – I'm just proud of everything we do, but but Rise really stands out. I I will – my little play joke on social media is like every time I go to a Rise show, I go to the exact same subway. Yeah. And I eat my sandwich and, and tweet <laughs> out, Rise is important. It is. And I'm going to say something here, and you know, Duke Davis and Gannon Jones Jr. are probably the only two that are going to get it. But we've been coming out to Rise now for two and a half years. When we came out to Rise, you had a mall that was failing. You had no Burger King. You had no gas station, <laughs> right? Now you got a gas station, a Burger King. You've got a Dollar General in there. The Royal King sales are, are through the roof, so I've heard, right? <laughs> Rise is important because we're building up that Connellsville area, an, baby. It's an anchor store now. I'm telling you. And the credit for that goes to Duke Davis because every time we drive out there, we say, this is because of wrestling. Yeah. So you can thank us for that Burger King Connellsville when you're eating your Impossible Whopper. Thank <laughs> Brandon <laughs> Kay for Rise Wrestling. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, uh, the reason I like to say Rise is important is because – I like IWC. I think they do really well. 
Yeah. They can only bring in so many people. Sure. Mm -hmm. And there are some really great talent that otherwise wouldn't get to Matt Connard, mm -hmm. uh, Lee Moriarty. Yep. Derek Direction. Yep. There are some guys that otherwise we wouldn't get to see in this area. Tony mm -hmm. Johnson. Tony mm -hmm. Johnson. Who, who, Credit to Tony has completely reinvented himself. Absolutely. Well, mm -hmm. And you're right, because, you know, without a rise, a lot of those people have been in the area and on other shows, but in those promotions, they're not going to do a half hour uh, Iron Man match that nobody's going to be bored of. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, that doesn't happen at other venues in right. the area. Right. Like, I, if, if you told me that that match was happening on uh, uh, some of those other promotions, I'd be like, well, that's going to be. Rough. You know, we, we're talking a lot and about how yeah. great the last Rise show, and definitely uh, Rise versus Grindhouse was a cornerstone. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget about Keith Hot versus Matt Connor, two out of three falls. Yeah, which could have which could have been a, a show uh, uh, anchor to begin with. That that could could have been a main event at any show. Oh, there were. I mean, that card from start to finish had a lot of. The matches were just great. System Elite versus uh, Forty Acres. Oh, mm -hmm. that was that was a was great tag. Team. PB really Smooth good. and Trey Lamar. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and and you know, eventually, I think the story writes itself for Forty Acres versus Hashtag Privilege. <laughs> yes, it does. Literally writes yes, itself. Yes, it does. But I'm tr I'm trying to think. So we opened the show with the, with Tyler Vox versus Robert Parker Williams, mm -hmm. which was a solid opening contest. Mm -hmm. Then you had. Uh, Dan and I with our segment with Jim Sterling. Mm -hmm. You had Atticus and Tony, which mm -hmm. was a fantastic yeah, match. Yeah. Then you went to the 40 Acres match. Then you went to the Matt Connard and Keith Hot two out of three falls match. And then you had the Rise vs. Grindhouse. And we had a ring break in the middle of it, too. Right. <laughs> and we <laughs> so, still didn't miss a beat. Nope. Still didn't miss a beat. Nope. So. Didn't rattle the rest of the show. Usually it gets weird after that. But For those good. that are interested in going back and subscribe to the Indie Wrestling Network, uh, I would encourage you to go back and, and look at Rise from the beginning mm -hmm. when it was first you know being recorded. Earliest show we have is February, mm -hmm. um, and I don't think I've said this. We are in talks to try to get some of the previous footage and have some of it edited for distribution. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in whatever form that's going to be, uh, but but I understand we can get a few matches out of that maybe from the first anniversary show or something. Yeah, there was a – so the first uh, – the, the first appearance of the gavel David Lawless at Rise was with Duke Davis. We were mm -hmm. part of the order, mm -hmm. and we faced Brandon K and uh, Dolph or Dirk Dirk Sigler mm. in I the watched, main event. I watched tag him team break match. his leg. Yeah, was, we didn't put that one out. Thank God. Yeah, thoughts and thoughts go out to him too. Yeah, uh, but tomorrow at Rise we've got the Stomp Out Cancer Show or. Not tomorrow, Friday. Friday. Depends on when you Friday. listen to this podcast. Could My be today. Goodness. Who yeah. knows? <laughs> Could have been yesterday. Go get it on the network. The days are, the days are just <laughs> blending, blending <laughs> together now. So, um, you know, yeah. So Stomp Out Cancer, which again, these guys uh, earlier this year. God, I, I swear I'm going to finish editing at some point the From the Ashes show for Sean Phoenix. Oh. But there's several matches out there you can watch from. I, I, probably the best. From my understand, I think those are the good ones. Not to say that anyway was bad. But the ones I'm told get this to freak out there are out there. Yo, uh, <laughs> I got to and I got to take a second to give props to Sean Phoenix and the Trestlers for organizing that show. Jeez, I got to give props to you for for getting the match out. The match you all need to go out and check out is the six way match, and I'm not putting myself over because I'm in it. <laughs> but it was the Whisper, the Hermit Crab, the Gavel David Lawless, Andrew Jeez. Palace, Alex oh, Zane, yeah. and uh, Zach was, Thomas, uh -huh. was, and. Alex Zane. Beautifully chaotic. Alex Zane. Loved that man to death. Had really didn't know who Alex Zane was before that show. Mm -hmm. He got there late. I'm not kidding. We didn't get ring time with him to talk about some of these spots. We're in the back. He's telling us what he's going to do. And at some point, Zach Thomas and I looked at each other. We're like, no, this, this can't be. This can't be. Because he called a spot where he was going to do a flip off of Andrew Palace's back and catch the whisper in a dragon run on the top rope. And I'm like, what? Like, I can't even conceptualize <laughs> this as a wrestler. So I'm just thinking, all right, get to the spot where I get knocked out so that I can, so that I can get to watch this spot. And man, he nailed it, nailed it. And then all of a sudden I start seeing Alex Zane hit a six thirty, 
at GCW's backyard wrestling show. And, uh, you know, I realize, wow, this guy is extremely, extremely talented. So Alex Zane, great guy, fantastic meeting him, fantastic working with him. All I can find are the spots where you're doing things for some reason, but, uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not mad about, you know, I'm not mad about my spots being up there either. So hold on, let's turn you up uh, because I believe uh, producer Missy was on camera for this one. I was not in town for this. Yeah, no, I was I was filming with Damien, actually. Um, the comment that I'm actually going to make is you guys are talking about Ad- Alex Zane and Tina, who is our certifiable like indie checkmark. Yeah, uh, our uh, Northwest correspondent. Yes. Uh, she's saying Alex Zane is awesome. Yeah. So she has er, he, he has her seal of approval, which okay. when this was the first time I had seen him as well and f- phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. And And now, you know. Literally, he's the hottest thing in independent professional wrestling right mm-hmm. now. Him and Johnny Patch after his coast to, his shooting star coast to coast. Is this the spot where you're talking about here? Well, this no, this is uh, that's a this, Spanish fly he's going into, isn't well, it? Well, this is when the cr- hermit crab choke slams the whisper in. Oh, okay. Oh, here. that's the whisper. Okay, I see. <laughs> there you go. But what started this whole spot was Alex Zane flipping over referee Joe McCoy's head. Oh yeah. And that was another funny thing. I remember. When they called the spot, I said, Joe, you want to be in between the top and the second rope when you're checking on me, and he does the flip. And Zane's like, no, 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 dude, just just stand up, duck your head. I'm like, this dude's going to jump over a six-footer and flip? <clears throat> he nailed it. I think I got it right here, if I'm not mistaken. So, so here's, yeah, this is... This you guys is, are setting up. This he's is a dive. Line. As Alex Zane would say, he's getting G'd up here. <laughs> Which is a great, which is a term that I've put in common parlance now. There you this go. This is him getting G'd up. Mm-hmm. He stops him. Hold on, hold on. Referee stops him. Yep. All right. He says, okay, I want to check on you guys. Uh, uh, Lawless and Palace are outside. He goes, hits it, hops right over the referee and does a flip. Yeah. Wow. <coughs> and, I mean, could have probably done a second flip and there. You guys can you all see to. this on the IndieWrestling.us. Um uh, YouTube page. It's the From the Ashes. Oops, got you coughing. <laughs> oh, I am human. A lot of stuff going on. Uh, Chase Owens, Lee Moriarty's happened on Stop Out Cancer. You're going to have another. Uh, I don't want to gloss over that Chase Owens of New Japan <coughs> and uh, recently mm-hmm. G1 uh, uh, tournament and everything. And Lee Moriarty, future of New <laughs> Japan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. One day, one day, very, very soon, probably you're going to. Gonna- He's gonna hate me for saying that. You're gonna too. drop that 9.99 yen to watch Lee Moriarty, right? I would drop 9.99 yen to watch Lee Moriarty. Isn't that what I said? <laughs> no, I mean like 9,000. Oh, 9,000. <laughs> I don't know. What- I don't, I don't know, know how what that works. I just know in America with WWE, when you say nine ninety nine, first thought you think is nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Right, right, so. right. But it's actually so. like seven something. It depends on what the what it, what it's at that month for the exchange mm-hmm. rate. Um, well, it was funny because we were trying to figure out the math when like uh, Yano was trying to sell that DVD for like fifty thousand yen. I'm like, wait, it's like twenty five bucks or something, isn't it? What kind, yeah, right. of, DVD, what kind of DVD is this? <laughs> Anyways. Uh, but the New Japan talk was last night. But no, really good thing. Uh, uh, stomp out. I believe it's stomp out cancer pgh dot com. Yeah, it is the cl- website. A lot of cool matches. Um, Beastman versus the Bone Collector, Dominic Garini. Ooh, that's gonna be a cool match. We don't get to see Dominic around here enough. No, uh, no, which will, which will be great. I'm not um, sure if I have seen him. I'm trying to think of who else. Uh, there's so many people he, on that a, show. He's an MMA to to guy, right? Uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Okay, okay. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And, um, I mean, Dom's great. He's the head mm-hmm. trainer at AIW, or one of the head trainers at AIW. Okay. Uh, I had a chance to meet him for the first time at the AIW tryout that they did in February. Super nice guy. He uh, he also tag teams with uh, Kevin Koo. Mm-hmm. Um, and they do this, like, ex- I don't, I don't want to say what their gimmick is because I won't do it justice. But Dom's a fantastic guy. Uh, you've got this four four way tag match with the Philly Marino experience coming oh, in yeah. as well, which will be fantastic. Mm-hmm. And you've got Hot and Hooven getting together again. Uh, what else do we got? We got six or there's a three on three Sam Adonis part of that with Brohemoth, Jamie Jameson yep. against uh, Christian Noir. Uh, 
EM is it e- M DeForest or EM DeForest? I think it's M DeForest. M DeForest. Yeah. He was here uh, for some of the Shakar showcase. Yep. Uh, last month, uh, Zach Thomas, of he, course. He was facing um, Whis- Still Life. That's right. Uh, Whisper and Gory. That's, That's going to be a great uh, match. Fun. Yeah. Wow. And Chase Owens, Lee Moriarty, of course. Uh, just a lot of just every, like just about everybody in Pittsburgh Indies and and all around the area. Uh, Brandon K, Remy Levey, that's going to be fun. Mm-hmm. Shirley Doe and Marshall Gambino. Oh, yep. Man, if you like people get uh, uh, watching people punch each other in the face, that is uh, that, that is your match preview right there. Oh my gosh! Yeah, Jeez. that's going to be hard. I would imagine those two are going to grab things. And there's the there's the moron <laughs> open challenge. Moron. Who's going to step up to the plate? I I challenge anyone in the Pittsburgh wrestling community. To step up to the plate against the gavel, David Lawless at Stomp Out Cancer Friday. Man, why is your picture last? Save the best for last. Okay, I don't know. all right. Uh, a lot of great stuff going on there. Please go <laughs> check it out. And uh, and wow, a lot of great stuff going on um, um, there. Uh, gavel, David Lawless. So we'll, we'll plug again here. We have so much more to talk about. Bradley has to talk about fans. Yeah, I think before we get off that though, let's let's say thank you to the Trestlers for organizing stomp out mm-hmm. and for the great cause that Absolutely. it is too. Um, we all dedicate our time. You know, we get, we get an opportunity to go up there and work in front of a, a huge crowd, but uh, to donate money to cancer research. I mean, anytime you can, you can throw together a charity event like that. Absolutely. Uh, also, you know, big shout out to the individuals at QCW who do the dropkick diabetes as well. Another great benefit show. So not, we need to have more wrestling benefit shows too. Mm-hmm. We do. Because there's a lot of good causes to donate to, and we as wrestlers, we're happy to donate our time. And it's a really cool thing, because for the most part, um, promotions put differences aside, and you get to see people mix up that don't usually have a chance to. Well, and it's a great way to network, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, <clears throat> we wanted to get Alex Zane for Four Chord Wrestling. He wasn't available because he had another booking. Mm-hmm. But I would have never made the connection without with Alex Zane, or The Whisper, or any of these individuals, without having met them on a show like from the ashes Mm -hmm. or from a stomp out cancer Mm -hmm. so you know what was cool about the from the ashes show which is is in the spirit of stomp out as well was you know so sean phoenix right it was so tressler Mm -hmm. get yourself out there introduce yourself to people you don't know make connections let's grow this wrestling community and this wrestling population Mm -hmm. and let's help each other out Mm -hmm. and that i mean that's a message that transcends wrestling right let's be kind let's get out there in the world let's help each other out but it's great when you can do it in professional wrestling because, you know, we, we don't do this if we're not passionate about it. So it's nice to help people along the way. Awesome. We'll Very talk more about this. A lot of great stuff. And, and you'll, if I can throw in. Before, oh, go ahead real quick. Before you go into commercial break, um, both of you know who Tyler Pajak is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, Tyler is going to go at getting having surgery oh. in the next couple of weeks. He has a very badly herniated disc in his mm. back. Oh, goodness. Okay. And he's going to be out for a while. So I just want to take a moment to shout out to him. Uh, me and Brittany, you've seen me and Brittany and Payjack going to shows a lot. Yeah. So we're both thinking of him. And uh, we don't know when his surgery is going to be with, but our, our thoughts are with him. Excellent. Yeah. Good. Good. Excellent. I'll feel weird going into my break from this. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go check out all that stuff. Again, we'll give links again and on social media. In the meantime, I want to give a shout out to another local institution our friends at slice on broadway for uh supporting uh pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for a good long time here right up the street here in beachview they're all around the pittsburgh area carnegie pa uh east end uh, as well as pnc park home the pittsburgh there's pirates there's a pe- perfect pepperoni pizza right over there there is they helped donate i just the had a couple slices feed, of the perfect pepperoni feed bradley pizza. on this show uh <laughs> yes <laughs> and uh but uh, uh thank you so much to them for supporting the show and again our unofficial advertising for them if you we know many of you are out there all across the country and let's help them with their global expansion they only had one location when we started out at them much like rise thank you for the burger king uh sorgatron media thank you for your slice in your neighborhood but let's help them out there wherever you are uh you know not not to not to withstand the fact that they just have the again the perfect pepperoni pizza but if you're out there if you have a broadway in your town take a picture of a tweet on pgh underscore slice on twitter and tell them you want to slice on your broadway that's called focus marketing go check it out uh slice on broadway.com thank you so much for them for uh supporting the show we're going to give you a message real quick you're going to hear katie's voice and then we'll be right back with the big 
question. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Well, it's kind of late. We've been talking. We've been chatting away for a while now. Yeah, this usually goes late. <laughs> I, I should warn you on time frame when we do oh. this. Well, you know, my boss is pretty cool now, so. Oh, good. He's, he's okay. Oh, okay. Uh, he, he has his moments, but uh, I, I checked with him. He said I can. He said he could stay up past his bedtime oh, good. if he wants. Oh, good. So, oh, yeah, my okay. boss is an asshole. <laughs> She's sitting right over there. <laughs> um, no, Sorgatron Media is mine. All right. We're on that dime right now. Sidekicks, sidekicks in, in the morning. Ooh, okay. <laughs> then it's her. Then it's her world. All right. <laughs> um. Okay. Hey guys, we are still here. It is yes, we're still here. Wrestling Mayhem show. We got Bradley, heel Bradley himself. Hello of, of heel Bradley fame of heel. My, yeah, of, of heel Bradley infamy. Infamy, whatever. It depends on which side of the barrier you're on, I guess. Also with us, the gavel, David Lawless. Go check out everything we just talked about. Gavel he's, all, he's all over the place. He's the, everywhere. That's the that's the patented gavel pose. If I could... If I could the, it's like the action figure that you lost the gavel, if, so he just always has his hands like that. So I, I do this because I have my gavel here. If I ever become oh. a good guy, I'll take gavel pounds from the kids. But anytime I give kids my gavel to hold, I always hold the this gavel up. So Okay. Or which gavel do you want to talk into? Gavel one or gavel two? <laughs> that's your choice. <laughs> it all writes itself. And that's exactly what leads into my next big question, actually. Um, you know, while the gavel David Lawless is an extension of real David Lawless, yeah. you know, I, I think there's something I've always loved, especially uh, uh, people I've seen come up over the last two or three years. There's a lot of characters, yeah. right? There's a lot of there's a police officer that you're hanging out with. There's a detective. I mean, you got a whole faction of of lawless and order going over there. Oh yeah, uh, oh yeah. <laughs> that 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 happens. Um, you know, between the jinxes and the Hollywood starlight, Katie Arquette's and and whatever Xander Gabriel is. Uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot of character going on there. Yeah. So if there was somebody coming up and training right now, what is a character? It could be a you know what do you call it? the 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 true. What do they call them? Trade characters when there was like the garbage man and everything. Back oh, in the day. yeah, 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 yeah. What, like, what, what, what occupation? Yeah, would what they occupational? Because I think because you're kind of an occupational. Yeah, no, I am personality, right? I am. Yeah. Um, the tax man, the lawyer. Sure. The, now CPA is out there too. Yeah. As CPA. Yes, the abominable CPA. The abominable CPA. Mm-hmm, Thank yeah. you. Busy season coming January to April. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, what is some like kind of uh, occupational or or character that you? haven't seen or maybe haven't seen done well you would like to see i want to start with one that i did see kind of well but i, I knew only you'd ha- small... i knew you'd have one night off the top I, of your I, head. but I, but i only got to see a small portion of it okay. and i i don't know the person's name so if someone in the message board can chime in and let me know there's a trainee from aiw i believe who's doing a millennial character <clears throat> and hmm. um it was dropkick diabetes the, the this kid comes out. He's got his cell phone. Oh, I with remember him, that guy. And it is awesome because he's literally talking on the phone as the match starts, <laughs> and he's like, "Nope, not doing anything important. What's up with you?" And he does like spots into it mm-hmm. with the phone, and I'm like, "This is awesome." It's a kid that literally will not get off his phone, which is a character we see on the streets every single day. Right. Hmm. So I, I like that. Um, what are some vocations or characters that we could see that are, I guess, popular in today's uh, today's parlance? Well, you could have the desperate, in debt college student. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of the I got kids, uh, that, that's I a, got student. Loans. I got student loans. Yeah, that, right? yeah. That, that's the that's new some, kids. That's a heel turn waiting to happen. It could be. Mm-hmm. It could be. Mm-hmm. They find some rich benefactor. That mm-hmm. says that you have to beat people up and I'll pay off your student loans. <laughs> it's the equivalent <laughs> of like a sugar daddy. Oh, mm-hmm. I like that. Or sugar that. mama, you know? Um, you could get the cougar character in there, right? Some older woman who hires young men. I think we're just giving him all the answers because I, I, I can't think of anything that good. Well, I don't know if I have something that good. Like any other fan, I've uh, daydreamed about what I would be. Okay. And what I came up with was... I, I I forget what the sh- the show that was sort of light loosely based off of, but I want I want to be a failing supervillain, like a supervillain <laughs> that's trying so hard 
to be feared and everything and doesn't get taken seriously. Kids yeah. laugh at him and things. I, I feel like you, you get that a little bit with uh, the professor, uh, uh, Ryan. Yeah, there's well, a you know what? There, because he's a mad professor. What, what comes to mind immediately is Professor Chaos from South Park. Oh, because it's Butters trying to be this evil villain, yeah. right? Sort of. No that, one takes that's a, Butters that's seriously. That's sort of the vein. That's, yeah, that would be very much. I was thinking more. Um, you remember Bill, uh, Billy and Mandy, the Adventures of Billy and Mandy, the cartoon. No, and they had a side care of a side uh, store uh, cartoon that was a guy called Victor Concarni, <laughs> and I Victor like Concarni was trying to take over the world, and he's got goofy sidekicks. Like I, I imagine it like my I'd have two sidekicks. One would be Billy Ruxpin, okay. And mm-hmm. the other one would be, That'd be a, your imaginary friend Billy Rocks. But and, and my other one would be Dudders. It would be Dudders, <laughs> basically being um, who was on um, um, Invader Zim's little buddy. That uh, oh, Gur, Gur. That would be my Gur. Dudders be a, would be my. She'd gur. just be a giant Gur. Right, basically. Okay. Someone that I just have. I don't know, I'm, Dutter- I'm trying to get her to do the right thing, and she doesn't. Do, I mean, that's a perfect thing for my my one of my favorite hashtags. No Dudders stop. Anything that involves Dutters getting into a professional <laughs> wrestling ring, I'm, I'm all for it. Did you see her step over the top rope? PP did I, training did I her? see her? She she was busting at the seams to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she did it right. She didn't fall backwards like that one guy in that clip. That no, and she I, was worried about it. She was like driving there. She was just like, "What if? What if I like like bounce off or mm-hmm. you know something?" Because she's a lot lighter than a PB. I want I want to see Dutters choke slam someone. That's what I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> the Dutter oh, Taker, if you will. The Dutter Taker. Dutter Taker. Dutter, Dutters is in the chat room. Is she still agreeing? I am totally Gur. <laughs> <laughs> Dutters. Dutters can take a. She could take a run at choke slamming me before the next Rise show if she wants. Okay. All right. It's payback for her flipping over well, my she's merch at my she's, table. She's going to be at Stomp Out Cancer, I think. So. Well, I mean, if we mm. can get any ring time with about eight million people, yeah, that's there. true. And she she might find herself on the show at that point. Um, I mean, everyone else in Pittsburgh. That's there, true. So that's true. Hey, she sure. could be the moron challenger. Oh. It is an open challenge. It's not gender specific. No, it is not. And you've uh, obviously done intergender wrestling, as we were talking about on the break. I have. Yeah. So I, I don't think I have anything other than. I, there was kind of a, on, in the vein that you had like, I saw this thing once and I wish I could see more of it. Um, it was the uh, the time travel, the time warp uh, four way at that circus promotion I saw the weekend that we were filming the Zach Allen documentary. Okay, um, in which Zach was Pogo the Wonder Boy. Um, he, 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 I know, not a Fidian, his old partner, um, the Funky Pharaoh, was in it, and it was the idea was there was a cowboy and a caveman that was not Beast Man. Um, <laughs> I think it was pre Beast Man. He might have been still hmm. Bulldozer then. And, and and the one was the robot from the future. Oh, and nice. he would fist pump, oh. but and he basically did the robot the entire match. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> now there's been some other like I've also seen Shockwave at the gathering, the uh, the wrestling robot, and mm-hmm. I believe actually Zach was in the match with him when he got water poured on him and he had to reboot him. <laughs> oh wow, I like that. <laughs> that was good. Like I, I like went that. In, more robots in wrestling. Question. Yes. Off topic. Who books for the gathering? Who books for the gathering? Yes, I think it's um, either Rude Boy was doing it this year, or it was um, uh, Kevin Gill. Because I think Kevin Gill is kind of the top guy there. If anyone out there has any clout in the gathering, that's one thing I'd like to do before I retire. Sam Adonis was there. I know. I was given. Uh, it was fun giving Sam Adonis, Lady Frost, and the Savage Gentleman a tour of the gathering before their matches that night. Well, so what's really funny, and this is a story that kind of connects you and I, Sorg, before I even got into wrestling, but I knew who you were. Uh-oh. So one of my friends, Margie Kerr, mm-hmm. who used to work with Scarehouse, mm-hmm. um, who I got to meet through a campaign that I worked on, but we became friends, uh, posted a blog about going to the gathering. Mm-hmm. And I stumbled upon the blog from being friends with Margie, but I'd also read a very I interesting I ever, I book. I don't think I ever read this blog. There was a blog. I remember you, you guys, like, it got super muddy at the gathering and everything, and it was exhausting. But I just read a book called uh, You Hate Me, But You Don't Know Me, or You Don't Know Me, But You Hate Me. And it was written by a Rolling Stone author who traveled around the country following juggalos and 
uh, Grateful Dead fans. I think I've heard about this. Yeah, and the book was basically trying to figure out what the culture of the Grateful Dead and the Insane Clown Posse groupies, for lack of a better word, or, or juggalos were, mm -hmm. and to write about why there was such a misconception about them in the general public. And it's a fascinating book. And I remember seeing Margie's story about going to the gathering. <laughs> I just with found you the blog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. And I think if memory serves me correct, there's like a picture of of muddy jeans hanging over the bathroom mm -hmm. because of how like dirty and disgusting it was that weekend. Mm -hmm. If 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 my memory. There they are. Look at that memory, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that memory. The question is, are those Dutter's jeans? I think it might be hers and mine. actually. Okay. But I will say Juggalo related that um, on there's the three of you. Mm -hmm. there's a uh, one of the most fun things that we did recently in wrestling. We did the brawl under the bridge at KSWA, and uh, I called some pretty nutty spots for myself. Uh, one was getting powerbombed into four chairs. The other was falling off the top of a ladder through another ladder. And there was nothing more fun than getting to say, F this shit before we went out and <laughs> saying, whoop, whoop, and don't try this at home, just like Superhuman <laughs> before oh, we went geez. out. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic hey man i've seen a lot of cool stuff with the gathering man it, it was the first time uh at a gathering in salito ohio i saw sabu and vampiro in a in a match for the uh, uh jcw championship and you yeah. know and then several la years later uh vampiro's uh telling mad mike to eat a bag of dicks on this show so I, it all comes around six sixth grade me was so excited when I was on a cruise, and I think we were in the Dominican Republic or the Bahamas, and at a record store, I found the original pressing of the Great Milenko, which was put out on Island Records before they got booted from the label. No. Hollywood Records. Hollywood. And then Then Island. they went to Island. Yeah. So it was the pre, the pre whatever, nice. after Disney kicked them off. The original. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's turn into a different podcast. Yeah, but, but no. I'm, so I'm just I'm just <laughs> going to put this out there in the ether. Yeah. If anyone could get the gavel, David Lawless on the gathering at one point before his career ends, that would that would be something that I would like to come full circle in wrestling. Is, it is, is do there too. It is a hell of an experience. And I did just put that blog post in the chat room for you guys on Facebook. Um. So if you want to check that out. So, uh, wow. A lot of stuff to touch on here. Uh, this show seems to get longer every week, and I apologize, Pretty or much. you're welcome. I'm not sure. Uh, but it's a, you just heard a little bit of uh, Katie talking about, of course, we do a lot of stuff with Sidekick Media Services uh, from sporting events, pro wrestling, live streaming. We just Facebook Live Fight Society this past Friday night and looking to do much, much more with that, uh, as well as, uh, hey, we'll be helping out with Stomp Out Cancer and Rise Wrestling this weekend. Uh, and, uh, we have, like, Adam, and, be, and in between that, I got a music video to shoot. Uh, Saturday morning. Uh, we're For doing, which artist? Uh, that would be Nick Iben. We've done several music videos with him over the last couple of years. So uh, this will be the latest. I think this may be the third one we've done this year with him. So, wow. Okay. Doing a lot of stuff with Nick. It's really awesome. Conferences. Uh, we are your sidekick to your next superhero project. What next big thing can we help you with? Go check out sidekickmediaservices.com. Now it's the Bradley section of the show. It is the Bradley section of the show. You had and something you wanted to bring to us. You had well, you, you, uh, were, you look, were commanded to come here this I week was, um, as a fan community service item. Yes. Explain um, yourself. Well, I have to start with what got me here in the first place, which was at uh, IWC. They were having the Jackson Argos... Uh, celebration extravaganza box social whatever it was and um jackson R was doing his thing and he was yelling into the mic and telling everyone they're dumb or whatever and wardlow came out and jackson put the microphone onto the table and wardlow chased jackson away he kicks the, everything over and this microphone comes near me and i pick up the microphone I remember this. And uh, the first, th I, was, I, I waved it to the staff. Like, I got the microphone over here, by the way. It was just, and none of them were paying attention to me. I'm like, well, they'll get over here essentially. I did get a picture of myself with it. Oh, yeah. And then uh, I had some friends behind me. And not thinking about whether the microphone was on or not, I turned to them, put the microphone to my mouth, and I say, let me tell you something, brother. And <laughs> when I said that, I heard it go throughout 
the entire arena. Yep. Was that the, is this is this you know we we have a good discussion about hearing your own voice on uh, on one of the other podcasts, Fishing Without Bait. Was this your mm. first time that you heard your own voice over no. loudspeakers? Over over loudspeakers, may, maybe. Okay. But I mean, I heard just enough that I was like, my voice doesn't sound exactly like that. <laughs> so well, plus you were doing the Hogan voice too. I, I did do the Hogan voice there. Yeah. Um, so, um, I'm ordered by LaRusso, you know, he, he thought it would be good for me to have gavel with me to make sure I fulfill my commitment. Mm -hmm. My, my regulator brother. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, um, I'm ordered to come here today to talk about fan behavior. Okay. And before that, in honor of Crystal LaRusso and Jock Sampson, I'd like you to also say that the regulators, Jock Sampson and Crystal LaRusso, are the greatest tag team in professional That was never history. part of the plan. Well, I'm adding it now, Brad. Damn it, Lord. And I'm a de facto, I'm a member of the regulators, so Chris and I are on the same page. If you could just say that and then we'll get there, this would be great. Take the, it to Brad. The, the regulators are the IWC tag, tag team champions. Okay. The regulators. The regulators. Jock Sampson. Jock Sampson and Chris LaRusso and Discount Miz and Chris LaRusso and Chris LaRusso are the greatest tag team are the greatest tag team in professional wrestling history in professional wrestling history. Thank you. And did you know Jock Sampson faced the Honky Tonk Man? I was there for that. Great. All right. Back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> wait, wait, what did that, why did that come up? It came up all weekend. Oh, okay. Every time Jock signed someone's uh, poster, he'd say, <laughs> you know, Jock lost Kong that man. match, by the way. No, he didn't. Yes, I, I was there. He, won he, he, he lost that match. Jock, if you're listening, you've never lost anything, brother. Yeah. All right. But um, th th an overall thing, I would say, is just be uh, awareness is probably the one of the bigger things. To be aware of, you know, of who's in the ring and what they've gone through. You know, the sacrifice, the work they've done, and the awareness of the people around you. Uh, that you know, are you contributing to that, or are you, as they would say, going into business for yourself? Mm -hmm. um, uh, so you start off with. I've got a list here. It's kind of I made a Facebook post a while ago. This is kind of abbreviated version. So I've had a list of like some items. And, um, and to Bradley's credit, I will say that he is he does embody the spirit of uh, how an individual should be a fan of indie wrestling and also basically any form of of you know independent entertainment. Well, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, so I'm kind of reading right off of what I, what I abbreviated. Uh, avoiding nasty language. Wait, Don't you... use the worst of the curse words. Uh, you've got kids around you. You've got you know you got people around you that just don't want to hear that. Um, and uh, don't you yell sexist or racist comments. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know we we've heard some of that. I won't repeat. But at, at rise in some recent shows that uh, just you know it it just takes away from the moment. Mm -hmm. And and I feel this is what I feel pretty strong with. I think homosexual slurs are there's no place for it anymore. Not Absolutely no place. No. And I'm even further. Um, what's surprising? You don't hear it so much as from the heels as from the faces. What do you keep on hearing the faces? The, the the wrestlers will say, "Oh, is that your boyfriend?" Mm -hmm. And that kind of and then so the, the you hear that out of the crowd. The crowd say, "Oh, your boyfriend over there." Oh, mm -hmm. I, hey, this, is uh, DCR your boyfriend? No place for that. Anymore. Absolutely not. Um, well, this thing got this back is off like the, the the commandments of uh, the Bradley commandments, commandments. Yes, I can see this being made into a poster or a uh, some type of yeah. like slabs. Let's get the slabs <laughs> up. You know? I'm going to go to everything with two slabs going forward. Um, making a few comments versus versus being the comedian, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you, David, ran into this. And the person that just has to say thing after thing and there here's a joke there a joke there and a joke there and you're gonna annoy everybody with that yeah i mean look i i think that there's a lot of people that that come to shows or there's some people that come to shows that try to make the focus on themselves and and it's about the mm -hmm. people that are performing in the ring i'll i'll throw a couple because I, i've said it in a way that um 
I am part of the show. I'm not the show. Right, but I mean, and and to anyone out there that thinks that the fans aren't an integral part of the show, I mean, you look back in the annals of WWE history in mm-hmm. ECW, and there were people that were fans that had distinct characters as well. I mean, remember? I mean, you remember that Ivan guy or whatever his name was at the old WWE shows who was all jacked up and always had the Ico Pro, uh, yeah, tank top on, hack guy at uh, ECW, hack guy at ECW, Frank the Clown. Frank the Clown, you've got now the Brock mm-hmm. Lesnar guy in WWE. I mean, that Brock Lesnar guy in WWE has more followers than most indie wrestlers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so I mean, <clears throat> I don't I, I, I like Heel Bradley. Oh. Plus you encourage other people to get into it. Mm-hmm. Um I, I'm I'm very much in the chance. You know, not only starting my own chance, but supporting other people's chance. I've seen some some people, they won't support other people's chance but when they have a second that they can say something they just share with it share with Mm -hmm. it and everything yeah um let's see what else i got here being conservative about what advice you have for a wrestling professional david you know what you need to do is yeah yeah my knowledge of professional wrestling is very small compared to david lawless my david you need to be more like john cena my knowledge, <laughs> don't we all, is microscopic <laughs> compared to, let's say, Shirley Doe. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, if I have an idea, I think I actually shared one or two. I was like, have you ever thought of this? Yeah. You know, but I can't tell, I, I shouldn't tell him, you need to do this. Well, mm-hmm. I think what you're saying, Bradley, doesn't just apply to professional wrestling and fans. It applies to the world. I mean, look, you know, mm-hmm. when you go to your accountant, Right. Are there certain things you may want to claim on your taxes? Sure. Can you do it? Maybe not. Right. right? When you go to your lawyer. Yeah, there's certain things that I want to get out of this case. OK, but if, if I can't give that to you, then, you know, you're not going to tell me how to do my job. Right. Right. You can make suggestions. We could talk. I mean, as a fan, I think it's good to get feedback from the people. You know, what do you like? Mm-hmm. What don't you like? Mm-hmm. But, you know, to actually talk about the nuts and bolts of. Oh man, like I wish you would have, you know, had a couple more rest spots or done this. Like, yeah. we don't need that. We don't need that. Right. Um, avoiding negative comments about a wrestler's performance or about the show. Don't state loudly the move was botched. Uh, yes. Or the ma- a match was bad or wrestler was isn't good. If you're sharing these thoughts, do it quietly. If, right. If I if I'm sitting next to Tyler, I might turn to him and say. You probably do that a lot too. Uh, probably a lot, <laughs> but uh, you know you do it quietly and and by all means, never chant. I'm not a cursor. You effed up. Yeah, no place for that. Yeah, I think especially in indie wrestling. No, I, I mean think, that that is the thing. I think in an environment like a JCW. Yeah, that's where that happens. But it's a very ECW like like thing. Yeah, but you almost uh, like that's expected, right? But uh, like it shouldn't. I can't think of a promotion that should happen here in Pittsburgh. No, mm-hmm. but that's not like again. When you go to a place like JCW, you know what you're getting into. Yeah, yeah, right. And I'm not saying that that gives fans free reign to so do whatever talk, they want. Juggalo Championship Wrestling. So they, just a yeah, you've heard the music. I mean, look. <laughs> here's the thing. You watch the uh, the old PWG shows, mm-hmm. right? When they did it at the VFW or whatever it mm-hmm. was, the fans would stand up and pound on the ring and everything. Yeah. At PWG, they want fans to do that, but n- not at every show. People shouldn't be standing that close to the ring or right. pounding the ring, right? It, it's specific to the promotion you're at, right? But in general, if you're going there to to belittle or demean the performers, please mm. just it, it's not right. Worth it. Don't don't do it. We're Absolutely. human beings too. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I had mostly negatives, but here's a positive: compliment wrestlers, compliment stat, staff, promoters. Um, I'm often messaging. I messaged Matt Connard after his really good match. Mm-hmm. If I didn't get to see him, um, I was complimenting David here. Thank you. Um, buy some merch if you can. Uh, there's a Lance Storm qu- quote that he says he tells to his trainers. He says that pro wrestling is the most expensive hobby you'll ever have. That or that or being a musician. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, that helps. They work hard to entertain us and especially respect the women. The women have a harder time, I feel like. Um, all you have to do is hear certain folks like Kelly Klein or Jordan Grace talk about the messages they get. 
Oh yeah. Um, just yeah. don't be a creep. Don't uh, send send strange messages. Um, Which applies to everything in life. It does. Um, and and respect the space. I I know fans will just cr- go up and try to hug the women. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I I have Missy ran into this. I have it like if the first thing I do with women is to shake hands. Yeah. You know, and if they show they want to hug, then you you can do hug. Yeah. And and and, and it's a polite shoulder hug. You oh, don't, you yeah, don't go full the, bro hug. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, I'm a, I'm but, a hugger in general, so I will hug male and female fans. Mm-hmm. But it but it depends on if they're comfortable with that and it depends mm-hmm. on That's right. You know, if 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 you have that type of relationship with people. That's right. Right? So you so you respect that space there. Sure. Um being a vault, which means you might get lucky and hear a bit of gossip. You might hear something from backstage or something. Um, uh, just be really careful who you share that with. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, I, I, I'd be hanging out with Sorg. I sometimes hear little things. I could go to the next Rise show and say, hey, I heard this. Blah, 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 and it could ruin things. Yeah. So keeping that to yourself. And there might be things that I hear that I just probably should never. Sh- I've, I've heard things I've, I've never shared with anybody because I don't think there's any appropriate time for it to, to, for that to happen. Yep. So, you know, keep it if you think. This is a good one. You you liked I think you'd like this one. Are these wrestlers your friends? Well, yes and no. You they 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 they're happy that you come. Yep. They mm-hmm. want to we say hi. Mm-hmm. They they they're ha- they're happy you you know you buy something from them. They might want to not want your messages every day. Um, Sean Phoenix recently was saying, work, we can't be your therapists. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, you might not want to just shoot DMs at them. Um, they might not go to your birthday party. Right. So, you know, you get to realize where that line is. And on the other side, Joe Dabrowski does, uh, he just did this past week. Uh, I can't believe it's on this past episode or one coming up, uh, talking about wrestlers, to, you know, watch friending the fans too yeah. for new guys. I, I've ran to that a little bit of that too. The friend uh, that, and uh, getting a wrestler that gets real friendly with you and it, it can get a little awkward. Yeah. I mean, look, you know, coming from especially my background and my profession, it mm-hmm. was, you know, it was a very delicate balance because, um, first of all, there's no one, I, I tell everyone that I encounter clients, friends, family, mm-hmm. people on the street that I'm a professional wrestler. Because my opinion is that if you find that out and you don't want to work with me or don't be, want to be associated with me, then I don't want to be associated with you, right? Mm-hmm. Because I'm very proud of the accomplishment of being able to do this. I'm proud of who I am. And it's entertainment at the mm-hmm. end of the day, right? It doesn't mean I want to beat up women or beat up men right. because I'm a professional wrestler. Right. With the fans as well, you know, I love each and every single fan that comes to the show. You know, I, it was funny. I was messaging with a friend. And they asked, how'd the show go? And I said, oh, you know, the fans were booing the heck out of me at the IWC show. And I loved it. Mm-hmm. It's like, I've never heard of someone that's happy that's that they're getting booed. But it makes sense. <laughs> you know, and we're always happy to talk to the fans after, talk to them in intermission. Uh, you know, we try to stay in character as best we can. But, you know, I, I like to think I'm a nice guy. But you're right. To a certain extent, right, there is a relationship that exists beyond the show. I'm happy to consult mm-hmm. with people if they have questions or need any help. But you can't be best friends with everyone and you can't be friends Mm -hmm. with everyone. Um, You get along with people, you're cordial, but, but at the end of the day too, like there's, there's breaks in your life, right? I don't wrestle all the time, Mm -hmm. right? I don't practice law all the time, right? I'm me. I need some of those divisions. If that makes sense. Absolutely. And that, that's more to the, they're not your best friends. Absolutely. Consider putting the phone away when you're going to the wrestling event. Yeah. Now, I, I, I used to, I, I, at one point I called this, just just put the phone away. Um, I, I thought about, as I thought about this presentation, an exception I would give is if you're sharing things that happen at the event. Yep. The only, that's the only thing I could think of because... To me, that's between te- matches. You're, you're telling your yeah. friends on social media, hey, look at this great wrestling. I'm seeing this great David Lawless match. Hey, and then you're, maybe your friends are going to say, hey, look at that David Lawless guy. He's pretty neat. I, I got to go to Rise and see David Lawless. But otherwise, you know, 
looking at your Facebook posts can wait till the event is over. Looking at what's going on on Twitter can wait. And we, we've to different levels. We all have face um, smartphone addictions. Sure, mm -hmm. but. Uh, I know myself, I, for the most part, unless I want to take a picture of something by chance, this phone stays in my pocket. Yeah. You know, I'm not, a guy, and there's some people that are, and that's fine, but I'm not a guy that even feels like sharing something that's happening on my Facebook. I, I'm like, let's put this away, because I want, I want to focus on the action. Mm -hmm. I want to focus on the wrestling and what's going on. Well, there's, I mean, there's a certain investment that you have to make into wrestling to really understand it. Right. Mm -hmm. To get the story that the wrestlers are telling or to 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 understand the overall show itself. I do think, though, that social media is it's our best friend and our worst enemy here in professional wrestling because mm -hmm. we're connected to everyone. But it also helps to generate the buzz and the word of mouth and, mm -hmm. you know, get your name out there. And, and that whole you never know who's watching. I mean, you look at someone like, you know, Johnny Patch and he does a, you know, shooting star coast to coast this weekend. That gets forty four thousand views because in less than twenty four hours that. because a fan taped it. That's right. And Caden, if if Caden's out there, or you know, Caden, great, great mm -hmm. guy. Um, I what he does is really cool, right? Mm -hmm. He tapes yeah. the stuff and then he goes and posts it after the show, mm -hmm. right? Because he's a fan first and he wants to watch the stuff. As yeah, it's going and no, on. And no yeah. promotions putting stuff out that quick, right? You exactly. Know, to, right. To, 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 you know, no, no. No promotion as a social media person. Sure. <laughs> no. But I think if, 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 if the phone is being used for that purpose while you're at the shows, mm -hmm. I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Or like when Gory's on top of the cage at IWC this weekend and you pull your phone out. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've never seen a Gory match, but I'm pretty sure he's going to jump off the top of the cage in the same <laughs> Right? So that's a big moment that you're waiting for. Yeah. Right? right? Yeah. So you know or what's when coming. the Rev Ron Hunt comes out at the cowboy hat, and you're just like, what the hell is this? I got to film this. Or when so. T. Ranchula goes and grabs nachos. Yeah. You're just, Someone's uh -huh. getting those nachos in their face, right? So you might <laughs> yeah. want to put that on social media. Yeah. Yeah. Or, but, I, or you get a message from David Laws. Be like, hey, I'm doing this cool move. Can you film it for me? I see you're in the audience. <clears throat> exactly. <clears throat> well, that was more for Lee Moriarty. Sorry to make you work on your night uh, off. Too. Yeah, Katie got the better shot. The ref was in my way, as That's true. usual. That's my true. story of my life. But these are all these are all great, Brad. Keep going. Um, <laughs> the I'm I'm going to wrap up with two things. One is I don't, I can't think of a single wrestling show where there isn't somebody within a, a, that's going to be annoying. I was missing made What'd some she strange do? noise once I said someone was going to be oh, annoying. That was, and that was off mic. God bless you. Okay. God bless you. Yes. <laughs> um, so just don't. It's always going to happen, mm -hmm. and don't let that ruin your time there. Mm -hmm. I'm. I've gotten really good at you know if if there's someone near me that's annoying, just block them out. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know I've because I've heard other people that will they'll start arguing with that person. Yeah, I've been at shows where you know. You're you're not going to get anywhere with that, correct? Mm -hmm. So just block them out, and just on your own try to present yourself as best as possible. And I'll just end with it's like I said, all you have to do is be aware of yourself, be aware of how you're coming off to the wrestlers, how you're coming off to the people around you. And once I, I ended this on my Facebook post and I'll end it up the same way here. Once you learn to all, do this, all this per correctly and become the perfect fan, you can come to me and tell me how you did it. Cause I'm not the perfect fan. Cause I touched, I grabbed a mi that microphone at IWC and spoke <laughs> to it. You, 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 you had the, the second worst cardinal sin. Yes. The first would be jumping the barricade. Yeah, but I'll tell you what. When the microphone lands in your lap, <laughs> I, I mean, uh, Bradley, I don't know if I fault you for, for taking that shot. No, that no, no, no. Either. Well, I, I, I mean, legit, legitimately, I thought the mic was off. Look, I would, I would say that that was the equivalent of the person who throws the home run back at the baseball game mm -hmm. to, to, to show the people, hey, I got the ball. I'm throwing it back. Right? Right. So... I mean, if, if that's the pro wrestling equivalent, then as long as no one got hurt, you're okay. Okay. So I'm off. I can yeah. go back to IWC shows now? No, no, no. I never said that. Well, well, I, I just never did the whole, I just did the whole thing that Chris... I'm wearing a stupid shirt. Well, first of all, that shirt's not stupid. Second of all, I'm going to have to consult with my brothers and the regulators to see if your penance has been met. What if I go to Stomp Out Cancer? Close.
You would have gone to stomp out cancer anyway, though. Fair enough. Gotcha. To, on to that quote note, Chris LaRusso. On, <laughs> on that note, I want to give... <laughs> You know, there's a lot of wrestling. We talked about a lot of the wrestling. And hey, and now I have something to put on the calendar that we just talked about tonight with the uh, Four Chords Festival. Yes, we're going to talk at. I'm going to plug it one more time. Well, Four Chord Music Festival, October 6th, Highmark Stadium. That is where the Riverhounds play. Sunday, October 6th, headlined by The Offspring, Simple Plan, Anne Berlin, Real Friends, Knuckle Puck, Seaway, Grayscale, Eternal Boy, Lookout Loretta, Keep Flying, Harbor. Atlantic Wasteland, phenomenal bands. One o'clock, we're starting the wrestling show. The card will be the main event versus the production from AIW. It will be Atticus Coger versus Matt Cross. It will be a four a four chord four way. MV Young, the Gavel David Lawless, Lee Moriarty, and Kevin Blackwood from Buffalo. And finally, the indie wrestling dream match for Pittsburgh, Brandon K versus John McChesney. First time ever first time ever seriously and also a band match that we'll be announcing later on so please support four chord music and support my best friend in the world rishi ball and come out and support check all that out everyone and yeah. we we of course we list all that stuff over at pittsburgh wrestling.com like some news items or a was featured in some local news outlets uh recently also on there but also you can uh bradley i'm sure uses this to uh uh, uh organize his wrestling if you can tell you can tell this this is just august Look at all the wrestling that happened in August. Seriously. I am looking at, and this is not, I don't think I even ended up putting Raw on here, but there right. are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 wrestling shows yep. within an hour of Pittsburgh. Yeah. Not even counting our friends at Black Diamond Wrestling over in West Virginia. I'm, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I'm legitimately booked out from, I have a weekend that I have to go to Las Vegas for work yeah. in October, but I'm booked out. For the rest of the year, minus holiday weekends. Wow, good time to be a wrestler these days. Great time to be a wrestler. And I was looking, looking almost as heavy next month. And I'm, I'm sure I, I still don't have, I don't have your show in here yet because I just learned it, and that's, yeah. I went up faded the black there. Uh, you know, there's a lot going on here. You can plan out the majority of your wrestling for the rest of the year. At this point, I am looking at uh, just a quick flip through on shows happening in the area. There are legitimately. Um, four weekends for the rest of the year that do not have wrestling on that I'm aware of. There could be wrestling in those spots that we just don't know about yet. Uh, two of those weekends are over the Christmas break. Yeah. So, so over <laughs> Christmas break, Christmas Christmas break. There are, those are the, those are two of the four weekends that are currently free of professional wrestling oh, okay, and okay. actually SmackDown's coming, um, on that last <clears throat> Friday. So let's knock that down to three. Well, and I would encourage everyone, look, I would say get out and see the Gavel David Lawless as much as you can. But yes, just, he's on the majority of these promotions. But one thing that, that Bradley will say, too, and I, and I think this may have been in your post at some point, just go and support wrestling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just go and support wrestling. Yeah. Supp- support yeah. good I, indie you wrestling. Know, and I, I do trained get, guys like this guy. Trained, like, people trained that, yes, but there's people like people get on my case about going to like some of the promotions I went to while I was traveling or even a KSWA or anything. Mm-hmm. You know, they have some stigmas on them. Um, but they are, I just love wrestling. Yeah. Right. And there's a place for those shows. They're not an IWC. They're not a rise. They're not an RWA. They're not a fight. Again, like you said, everything's delivering something different there. Yep. It's, it's a fun night. It's got good people on the show. It's, um, you know, it's, it's, and I want to support all that because there's a place for everybody, everybody that's on this list. There's a place for in Pittsburgh wrestling. That's different than everybody else. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and so, for, so check out pittsburghwrestling.com. Yeah, I would encourage everyone on Friday to come out to Stomp Out Cancer at Rise Wrestling. Um, big show and for a great cause. Saturday, I would encourage people to either come out to Rise, which is in Springdale. First or, time. Or KSWA, which is going to be out at MJ's in Coriopolis. Mm-hmm. So, so if you're on a different side of the city, you have an option. Yeah, yes. basically. If you don't want to cross the river, you got an option. That's well, that's actually how it was intended. There you go. Right? There you go. Unless you live in Penn Hills. You could actually fly in to Pittsburgh Airport and come to Coriopolis. There you too. go. There you go. I wonder how many fly-ins we got for this <laughs> show. <laughs> uh, real quick, what did you guys learn from wrestling this week? I learned that you can reinvent yourself at any point mm-hmm. using elements from historical wrestling and still make an impact. And that Tom Savini is a genius. 
for making those masks and that lantern cover for Bray Wyatt. Absolutely. Dude, that, that, that lantern, that lantern head was crazy. It's awesome. Bradley, what'd you learn this weekend? This um, week? Well, what you had suggested to me when we were talking on, uh, was talking about how Saturday is going to be my sixth anniversary of yes. going to wrestling shows. I didn't even get to call this out. Um, it's, and you go, go, when you hear about people complaining about putting them up flyers to just tell them the first show that Bradley went to, there was a flyer on a barbershop window. Mm-hmm. He saw that and he said, I went, I want to go to that show. And then, yeah. then he kicked somebody through that window. <laughs> well, no, and he's that, not allowed in Canada. Anymore. That, 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 that's actually illegal in real life. But, uh, I, as I think about it, like what I've learned in the last six years is that as unsurprising as and truly, truly anything can happen in professional wrestling. Yes, it can. Um, I've, I've had my big, some fan that I barely know bring in my big giant head to a, to an event and then had John McChesney slam Chris LaRusso's head into it. That was awesome. Um, I've, I've had been spit on, I've had, uh, all kinds of weird stuff happen to me. And I've, I've had Jackson Lyra Gargos in my lap recently. And you rocked him like a baby. And I rocked him like a baby as much as it was difficult to rock a 200 some pound guy. But, um, Jackson Argos it, weighs over 200 pounds. I learned he, that this week. He was <laughs> uh, he was sweating, so he was probably soaking there wet. There was a tail tape. We can find out. Just no, over I'm just the, kidding. I love Jackson. Um, but uh, and if you want to, if you want to enjoy it, maybe even further than the, for the next fan, be respectful to everybody. Yeah. Join in with it. Try not to get what I was calling getting drunk, which is. You say something funny and people laugh and you say, "Oh, I'm the comedian." Now. Just, just go with the flow, yeah, and just join in. Do what you think that the, was going to help the promoter. Do what you think will help the show, and just enjoy yourself and be respectful and and, and make it friends. Can be amazing. Mm-hmm. I, I've made friends with referees. I've made friends with staff. I've made friends with camera guys, including that guy right over there and that uh, nice woman back there. Or make friends with other fans. I mean, well, you talked or about other fans. Um, yeah, I, I've got fans now that uh, I love driving to events with, right? Or, or going to Eaton Park after the show with. That's you know, you talked about the wrestlers not being best friends with the fans. Well, mm-hmm. the fans can be best friends with each other. And I've mm-hmm. got some other fans I'm very close Absolutely. with. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, so, what what do you look for in friends or significant others? Right, people that have common interests that you have fun with. Mm-hmm. Right. If you're at a wrestling show. Chances are the person sitting next to you likes wrestling too. So there's right. your opportunity to, to meet a, a new friend or connection. That's right. Fantastic. Was that, um, was that nice and deep or that something? That was like very that? nice and deep. That was okay. very nice. Very nice. I learned. Um, I learned uh, I need to try not to get blamed um, at ringside. Um, AJ Alexander was uh, uh, messing with uh, oh geez who was the rev taking on I think it was Patrick Hayes and uh, I got blamed for uh, knocking Patrick Hayes off of the turnbuckle oh, so I gotta watch my boy. watch where I'm at out there especially with those Jesus Club guys yeah <sighs> anyways David Lawless where can people find you online uh, Facebook the gavel David Lawless Esquire Instagram Gavel David Lawless and Twitter Gavel Lawless. Uh, and while I'm at it, I'd also encourage people to check out Four Chord Music and on Facebook, Four Chord Music Festival 6 featuring The Offspring. Awesome. Bradley? Uh, mostly on Facebook. My name's Bradley Ruthers. Um, I'm barely on Twitter as Heel Bradley, and I'm a little bit on Instagram as Heel Bradley. We just tag you in all the pictures that we put out. Okay. <laughs> and of course, check out everything. Uh, going on, producer Missy. Thank you. Just just popped in my head in case I forget it. Um, and uh, uh, check out everything going on um, between IndieWrestling.us, between our friends out there, all the all the wrestling out there. And uh, stay tuned. We will have uh, part two of talking with Joe Dombrowski this week for the Indie Mayhem show. We'll be posting on Thursday. He talks about uh, the last interview with uh, the guy that used to be known as DJ Z. 
uh, as well as a few other things. I think we got into some chat about uh, Johnny Gargano and the, uh, some inside stuff on those spots they did with NXT going up to Turner's Hall, which is where Premier Wrestling uh, oh, runs yeah. right now, yep. and a few other things uh, uh, with that. So a, a really good, uh, always a good chat when we have Joe. I mean, we did like two hours of content <laughs> when okay. he was in here. Of course, we had Jimmy DeMarco in here as well, which is always, always fascinating. I, I encourage you to go check out that interview too. Uh, longtime listeners of the Mayhem Show just know how know about how crazy it gets when uh, Demarco's around here, and it's really um, interesting. Uh, he he's got some interesting takes on uh, his kind of post injury career and and everything too, and some stuff there. So if, especially uh, if you're a longtime IWC uh, follower uh, and remember the days of Jimmy Demarco, that'll be a great listener for uh, listen for you as well. Uh, thank you, everybody in the chat room. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, if you're on Patreon, uh, I'm gonna ask the uh, I'm gonna ask the gavel. I want to cross examine the gavel on the Patreon uh, exclusively for you guys on After Dark. We're gonna find out what that means because I'm not entirely sure yet, and uh, <laughs> we'll find out. It's dark already. So. Thank you, everybody. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.